Hello to all of our wonderful patrons and yes. subscribe stars. Thank you for joining us for this month's exclusive podcast on Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Yes. Studio Ghibli film. It is my favorite of all the Studio Ghibli movies. You know, it's, it became that for me. <laughs> and specifically at the ending of the film. I was yes. like, oh, that does it, man. That does it. This is, this is like his best work. And it was his first big notable work yes. as a director. And, it, and he, he, did you know he wrote a manga first? I did. Yes, yeah. I did. And that's, that was like one of his great passions was manga, mm -hmm. and not so much movies. In fact, there was a time where he stopped doing movies just to do more manga. Mm -hmm. But the movies, people, people really liked his movies, yeah, there so was, he came um, back. Uh, he, he had a bunch He's of He's retired his... from movies like 10 times. I saw him. He, um, he uh, I was reading a little bit about this, right? So he had worked on like Loop in the Third and then... Yes, previously. What was the Castle of Cog? Cagliostro. Cagliostro, Which yeah. I love that movie. So that movie hadn't done super well at the box yeah, office. But he, but he impressed to Toshio Suzuki. He's ah. the editor of the magazine Anim Animag Animage or Animage. And he was so impressed by that movie, by Castle of Cagliostro. Cagliostro. Yeah, it's an Italian word. <laughs> that he asked him to uh, come like pitch some stuff to them, right? So he had actually initially pitched a bunch of like film ideas that were rejected. And then he asked him to do a manga, which led to him writing Nasco the Valley of the Wind, mm. which was published in that magazine, I think. Um, um, no, probably not. Probably just as its own manga. Anyways, mm -hmm. point is, it was a manga first, and it became, as it says here, any Magi's most popular feature. Mm. So then he was asked to do to write a film adaption, mm. and he refused to do that unless he could direct the movie. Mm. He had to direct it. He's not just going to write a script and like let someone else make that. Give it away. This yeah. is his original story, and yeah. not all of the Studio Ghibli films that he's made are original stories. That's of true, his, right? Yeah. Well, like there was yeah, yeah, adaptions from other things yeah, yeah. or you know folk tales or whatever. Yeah, or this, they're based on folk tales. This is his original world, original story. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure that he could direct the film, um, and so there are differences between the manga version and the film version. You know, I didn't look into the manga like at all. But they're made by the guy who wrote the original thing. Yeah. So, you know, uh, in order to kind of focus the story more and get it into that, you know, two-hour time span. Right, yeah, that's important. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time going into the background and things like that because this is just a one-off episode. We just want to kind of jump right into the film. Yeah. Uh, but there are a couple of pretty interesting tidbits I'll bring up along the way uh, of behind-the-scenes stuff. Oh, good. But I, I loved how, like, the first thing you see when this movie mm -hmm. opens up is Chocobos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Chocobos. The, the black ostrich. Yeah. I have a feeling that this movie, or possibly the manga, uh, inspired a lot of Final Fantasy I stuff. I got that feeling watching it, too. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it inspired a lot of Final Fantasy stuff, specifically because of the Japan connection. Yeah. I also think it, it's just inspired a lot of movies, yeah. even just in the West. Yeah. Just tons of movies. That, that intro scene is she's, you know, scavenging through the fungus and sliding around and looking for something, you know. Yeah. Um, it's very reminiscent of what they ended up doing in Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force, the Force Awakens, Awakens yeah. where Rey is kind of going through the, the trash heap of the Star Destroyers, you know, yeah, and all, scavenging. The, all that stuff, just getting whatever she can find. And she's alone and the music's very minimal. And it's very interesting. Interesting. Um, I think that that would have been based on this. I'm pretty sure J.J. Abrams is like an anime fan, yeah. right? So he probably uh, has yeah. seen this movie, and I, oh, I would I'm not sure. doubt at all that it, that sequence was inspired by. Mm. It, they seem so similar. Yeah. Uh, and but I, honestly, really, like, just I feel like this movie. I, I kept getting hints all throughout the film of like this. The other other people have have. I've seen other things like this. Other people have yes. taken this work and built on it in their yeah. own way. And, you know, they talk about standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Yep. This is... Now, Miyazaki stood on shoulders of other giants. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> he is one of the giants that people stand on. Yeah. And it, you've got to have respect and reverence for that. Like, he is, he is one of the giants uh, that, for the last 40 years, that people have built on his yeah. work. There's some really interesting inspirations, speaking on that point, Yeah. that went into this movie and one of them in particular I'll bring up later but clearly Dune was one of them. Oh clearly, like, clearly, yeah. You know, the Alm being kind of this movie's version of uh, the, the sand, sandworms. Sandworms, Dune. yeah. The, the glider and the ships, the airships looking yes. like kind of insect-like. 
Yeah. Um, you know, there's clear, clearly some like Dune inspiration. And, and here. the desolation, you yeah. know. So that's just, that's the, yeah. everything is a remix is a great everything little web series that you yes. guys should watch if you haven't seen it. Oh, that's good stuff. But yeah, a lot of things have been inspired by Nausicaa since then, clearly. Yeah. And it was inspired by great stuff that came before it. Yeah. Uh, Earth Sea was one of them too. Yes, Earth Sea. And it's yeah. funny that they, uh, the Studio Ghibli, ended up doing an Earth Sea adaption. Yes, Miyazaki's later on. son, I His think, son directed. directed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, but yeah, I feel like the creators of Final Fantasy games used some inspiration from Nausicaa. It feels yeah. that way to me. Yeah. Uh, chocobos and the airships and just yes. the world feels like almost like a Final yes. Fantasy world to me. And Even what, a, what the, a strange world. Too. Like um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, right? Where oh, yeah. There's this miasma, this poison ah. uh, in the world, and they have to use these little crystals to protect them as they go out, you know, and venture ah, into the world kind of thing. I feel like there's a lot of the DNA of Nazca that's gone into di- many different JRPGs and things afterwards. Nice. Um, okay, so the opening shots have a man riding on this chocobo. He's got another one trailing behind him, but there's all these spores that are kind of shooting out into the air, right? Yeah, and they he's, all kind of have he's masks. He's wearing a mask. The chocobos are wearing a mask, too. Yep. And they're and interesting uh, masks with, like, a mustache. It looks like yeah. a, kind of a funny look. Yeah. So there's just this fungus that's just kind of, like, totally overtaken the, the ruins of this village. And he's kind of going through this village, you know, looking for survivors. He sees... Uh, like a little doll that sort of crumbles in his hand and yeah. there's skulls and there's just yeah. fungus everywhere. I mean, uh, this character is Lord Yupa. We'll Yupa, learn yeah. in a, a little later, but um, he's like another village, you know, destroyed by the toxic jungle. Yeah, when will it thing. stop? Mm-hmm. Um, fungus being everywhere. Fungus is invasive, right? It yes. doesn't feel natural. It's, yes. it's parasitic by nature. Yeah. And so the fact that it's fungus that's doing this is very... It's very unsettling, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it feels very unnatural. That's the that's the really cool thing about fungus too. Is like uh, if you haven't seen anybody watching this, there's there's a really great little documentary on Netflix called um, Fantastic Fungi. That's what Fantastic it's Fungi. Oh, cool! Everyone should watch it because fungus is such a fascinating life form. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like it's not a plant, right? But it's also like not. <laughs> you know, like an animal. It's kind of like yes. both things. It's this it's really yeah. weird life form, really alien to Very look. strange. But yeah. the, the, the fungal networks... They kind of behave like... all of it is connected yes, yeah. is so crazy. Cool. They'll organize themselves among the same principles that humans organize societies. Yes. It's like, how sentient is this thing? Yes. <laughs> it's it, kind of creepy. It's, it's creepy, but it's so yeah. cool that like there's an element to it that we don't understand. And yeah, dude. Anyways, everyone should watch that. Uh, but it plays a little bit into what the toxic jungle is actually doing in this world, which is, yeah. it seems poisonous and destructive, yes. but in actuality, it's cleansing. And right. fungus serves the same purpose in real life. Mm. Um, so, yeah, in, in, in terms of its role in decay and yes. rebirth yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that, right? So it feels unnatural, but it's almost like extra natural. Yes. It's almost like supernatural. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> it's like the most natural thing that essential to essential. our ecosystems yeah. working. Yeah. Without fungus, it wouldn't. W- life couldn't really work. <laughs> wow. So it's it's anyways the the fact that they chose a fungus for that sort of revelation of what the the toxic jungle is actually doing is very very cool. Very cool. Um, so I wanted to break down a little bit the opening credits. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Because there's a lot of symbols and things like that. Yeah, I, I thought I, maybe I you had some taken notes. some notes on I that. Sh- I sure did. And I, um, I actually yeah. took some photos. Oh, good. Of everything, so that we have them. Yeah, it basically tells the story. Yes. <laughs> In so, the opening, and that's kind of why I was like, "Ooh, do I take?" Yeah. So or do I mention the, these notes? Because the it's... first, the the title of the film, is on. It, these are kind of like hieroglyphs, right? There, there's like a split screen. It's kind of like diagonally split. And you have like an angelic figure up here, like a, yep. a woman with angel wings and like a blue background. And yeah. I can't really see what this is too well, but it's got like um, a red background. There's two dragons opposing each other and they're breathing fire. 
Oh. Um, and they're cir and circling around um, the middle symbol here, but it's two dragons, gotcha. um, which is duality. So it's not the Ouroboros, it's not one dragon eating its tail, it's two dragons at war with each other. Which is yes. the whole duality we were just talking about with fungus, right? Yeah, exactly. Destructive, exactly. but also essential for rebirth. But there's two sides, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's cool. And that, that redness, is, it resembles a little bit the flag of the, the invading people. Oh, the Tolmikians? Yeah. 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 They have a red kind of a flag to there. The second image has some people like on some boats. Actually, I think these are airships. It, it, that looks like fire Yeah, because they, the they, they have wings. And they have wings. So yes. these people have some technology. Uh, their ships are flying. You can see the city below here, right? Yep. So they're, they're like uh, an advanced civilization. They left Earth, yeah. Uh, they've got like a sun here, and I don't know what this is up here. It kind of, it's like blue and this one's red. Uh, yeah, they're they're meant to be opposing forces, but yeah. I couldn't tell you exactly what that is. Yeah. It's a star or a moon or something. Star like or that. moon. But the the important thing about that one is the color. Yeah. You have the red on the left and the color of blue on the right. And the important thing to note is that the ships, the energy of the ships, they're moving towards the red and away from the blue. Away from the blue. And will those colors will come into more significance later on. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we see the first giant warrior being built here. They're kind of like yeah. building the hands and the feet and the torso, and they're sort of, sort of constructing these weapons. Here's the heart, yep. right? The heart of that beast. They're building the giants. The eyes are here. So they're like yep. constructing the giants. And the, it's a blue giant, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Which means, well, passive or peaceful. Right? Sure. In the, in the movie, it means that. And then, then the next one, we but, see that monster destroying a yep. city. But it turns against everyone and is used to destroy them instead. And yeah. we see people here burning in the flames, and it's just like shooting flames and burning the city. Yep. Uh, then this is just a shot showing what they actually looked like. Yes. Walking. It's very cool. Um, Almost like a robots, kind of, yeah. Yeah, this actually reminds me of um, Hyper Light Drifter. There's, oh, really? There's some imagery here that looks a lot like Hyper Light Drifter, actually. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, well, the colors, I know the colors there definitely resemble Hyper Light Drifter. Let me Drifter. see if I can show you this. Show. You know what this reminds me of is the Book of Enoch and the beginning of Xenogears. Oh, yeah. And how they constructed the giants, right? And the giants were meant to help them, but ended up turning on them. Um, and this is Book of Enoch stuff, because uh, the, the tradition of the Book of Enoch says that before Noah's flood, um, that the people were, that there were giants in the land, and that mm -hmm. the people were experimenting with human-animal hybrids, oh, right. and with hybrids between gods and humans, right? Mm -hmm. Which created additional layers between humans and gods, which separated humans from God, which then resulted in the flood on the earth. So anyways, yeah. Xenogears is playing on the Book of Enoch, um, which is similar to, I think, Miyazaki was doing a similar thing with the giants here. Yeah. So I don't know if you've seen the opening of Hyper Light Drifter. Uh, but there's some um, really cool shots If I here. have, it's been like a long time. Really cool shots here. Uh, let's see, here it is. So this is, this is, this is just so clearly a Nausicaa-inspired image here. Right? Look at that, you're right. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> and especially watch this. Wow. Right? Yeah. Wow. So Dude, we we're, were gonna we're gonna see Nausicaa inspired <laughs> things for the next century because yeah. it, this film is that impactful. Yeah, it was huge. So anyway, that's what that is, and then um, very cool. The next hieroglyph we have it looks like animals and people dying, and plants wilting right. even and falling, yep. and then there's people underground. So it's like they're yeah, like everything's dying. Right? Yeah, it's killing everything. Mm -hmm. So you know, the the jungle started to grow and become poisonous. See some more shots of these giant warriors in the burning yeah. cities uh, from behind again. And then it shows these insects, right, that are flying and they've got skulls in their mouths. Oh, yep. As they kind of devoured people. This is a ruined city here, skulls and bones on the ground, stars up here. Um, and then we see the fungus the, the, and, the, and the, the big insect, the alms. Yep. And people over here fighting against insects it's kind of hard to see now see the people fighting against the insect the insects red yeah. but in the rest of the tapestry the insects are blue blue so you have the passful peaceful insects yes. the only ones that are aggressive are the ones that the humans are fighting yes right. the the suggestion here is that if you were humans not fighting them then this wouldn't have been a problem right um, and this is the kind of panning over here and and we because this guy was the one fighting the little insect that was uh, right, there, yeah. right you kind of come over here there's like this door and there's like people, I don't know what to make of this part, 
I but, couldn't tell you either. Um, or even this part here. There's, there's these golden... Well, those are the roots that are surrounding yeah, the angel right. later. And, and but the, I don't know the, the, the alm sort of like... Oh, their little tendrils tentacles, that they yeah. used to like, and that makes the golden field. It, it could have right? something to do with that, But yeah. then we see the angelic figure in blue. Yes. Uh, which is going to be part of the prophecy that Nausicaa will end up fulfilling. Right? Exactly. The, blue, the but, angel in the blue dress. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's what I've got. Yeah. Um, these tapestries are so cool, and it seems to show their destruction was because of their own making, right? Yeah. So the machina destroyed everything. A machina. The machina yeah. destroyed everything. Insects and fungus took over. People fled. An angel of hope arrived. And then we see Nazca. Then the, fir the first person we see now is Nazca, mm -hmm. kind of going about salvaging, scavenging and salvaging. Did you, did you watch this in Japanese? I did. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a few uh, notes in Japanese yeah. for it. Um, Patrick Stewart does the voice of uh, Lord Yupa. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's, I, it's I, really I saw the cast after yeah. the movie, and it was like Mark Hamill again. Yep. Because um, um, he did the villain. Shia in, LaBeouf. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, because when Disney yeah. got the rights to in two thousand five. Yes. Yes. They basically used a lot of the same actors in a lot of the new versions. Yeah. Because there was an English version of this movie that was made in like nineteen eighty five. A long time or ago. something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. But they had. Cut it. They had edited they the edited movie. It, yeah, and and because um, it's a pretty that weird pissed movie. Hayao yeah. Miyazaki off big time. Oh, yeah. and he was like, "I swear, I am never going to let you do a, a foreign language version of the film unless I have say over the over cut. the edit." Yeah, and uh, it's actually Harvey Weinstein who was trying to um, basically uh, he was trying to change the film a little bit for another English version they were going to yeah. do uh, in order to market it in America, right, and Hayao Miyazaki mailed a sword to him with a message that said, no cuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like I'll bet you, I'll bet you he kept that sword. Yeah, he mailed, mailed a katana with a yeah. message that said, no cuts to, so to funny, Harvey man. Weinstein. <laughs> no cuts. <laughs> so Hayao Miyazaki is very protective of his uh, artistic vision. His, his IP. But um, yeah. yeah, so when Disney, eventually acquired these and started yes. doing the, they got all of Ghibli's stuff yeah they it was a strict like we're gonna make a yeah. faithful English well after Miyazaki had shown that hey every movie I make is solid gold yeah then it's Disney's like oh okay and he got a name for himself and people in America knew who he was and all that yeah. it's like okay now we'll respect you yeah. and you whatever you say sir yes, yes please yes right. please because his movies were worth 100 million dollars now you know mm -hmm. But in the, in the 80s, it was not so obvious that he was going to become, yeah, you know, as like big as one was. of the greatest directors of any genre in any part of the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I want to throw said. out, too, the insects. Um, they look like Japanese, well, they look like warplanes from World War II. Yes. Um, I mentioned this in our Final Fantasy X podcast, but a lot of the conflict stuff and the media that comes out of Japan, especially around this time period, um, is very much connected to World War II. Mm. Um, and it's, it's you know, maybe in America, it's like, oh, we've moved on. We're, we're all about James Bond and the Soviets now. You know, we don't, we're not about the World War II thing anymore, you know? And, but at the time, Japan was like, this was, this was how Miyazaki grew up with these, the buzzing of these planes flying over his house, you know, like every day. Yeah. And, and the destruction that it bring. And so these, these, um, these bugs that are flying around with the wings that don't really flap, they're just kind of still, and they make that sound. It's yeah. basically like World War II airplanes, yeah. like the Spitfires, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, there's, there's even the airships, right? Like the kind of dogfighting that goes on between yeah. like the Pejite gunships and the oh, yes. Tomekin gunships. It's very World War II. Yeah, because those, yeah. those big gunships were like the B-52s or something. Something yeah. like in the Korean War, we had these B-52 bombers that were flying over and just devastating North Korea, right? And then Russia started flying MiGs mm -hmm. into North Korea, and our B-52s were massive sitting ducks that were just sitting there cruising along, and their MiGs would just come through and shoot 50 holes in them and just down them. Yeah. And all, we lost like all of our B-52s over Korea in just a couple weeks once Russia got involved. Yeah. And then it was like, holy crap. But you see that in this movie. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. They're flying these big planes, and. It, you know you're being attacked, but what can you do? Yeah. It's like uh, you're in a massive plane, and even a little fighter just needs to shoot a few dozen holes in your yep, and you're ship, and you're done. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, it's crazy. But that, that was America's experience in Korea. Yeah. So, yeah, we see this girl, Asuka, on her glider. 
Yep. She lands in the toxic jungle. She ventures in. She's like collecting spores. Yeah, yeah, and these little test tubes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, we learn more about that later. That becomes but important later. She finds the alm shell, and it's like that was so crazy. The reveal of that is yeah. like holy cow. And she's not afraid. She just runs right up to yeah. it. She's like, yes, that's what I'm looking for. And it's like yes. that's what you're looking <laughs> yes. for. This thing, because you don't, you haven't seen an ohm yet. Yeah. But just seeing the shell of the ohm is like. You don't want to be there. Wherever you are yeah. is a dangerous place. Go somewhere else. If I saw that out yes. there, I'd be like, okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> this is a nest where yeah. these big monsters are. Uh, maybe don't go there, right? Yeah. But she's like, yes. And come to find out, these are resources for her people. Yeah. They use the shells of the ohms because the, they're so indestructible. Yeah. They're, they're harder than metal, you yeah. know? And so you, they use those shells in order to build houses and, and military equipment, yes. I think. Yes, and uh, Machines. the staff that she wields and swords, yes. and they, yeah. they use, they harvest them for materials. And their windows come from the, the eye yeah. glass. Now, I'm glad that you brought this up. This is something I was going to bring up a little bit later, but I think we should just go ahead and do it now. Um, she wasn't afraid. No, not even a little. Not for one second. Yeah, and, and, yes. and we're thinking, I would run away from that thing. Oh my gosh, immediately. Not, this is, yes. this is absolutely integral yeah. to the theme of this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The theme of this movie is all about how fear yeah. drives yep. violence and greed. And I've took, I took down tons of lines of dialogue where it yeah. just, they reinforce this over and many over and times, over again. Many times, many times. It's and when people afraid. are afraid yeah. that they act on that fear that yep. things go wrong. And that's almost why, like there are pretty clear-cut bad guys in this movie. Yes. But I, I can't attribute evil to them. I understand their motives yes. almost perfectly. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, that's a that's smart. I know that Nausicaa is going to be right because she's the main character and she's just right, and mm -hmm. that's how movies tend to go. But I sympathize with the other side. Yes. And then the other side to that other side. I sympathize with them too. Mm -hmm. And the people who want to use the bad guys against each other, the people who want to destroy the fungal forest and Nausicaa and her people, I understand all the sides. And even eventually the forest itself. I understand all sides here. Yes. None of them are acting with malice. They're all only acting out of fear. And self-preservation. Exactly. So... A big theme or a big inspiration for the theme of this movie is a Buddhist concept about the roots of evil. Not evil yeah. itself, but the roots of ah, evil, okay. right? So greed, ill will, and delusion. Hmm. And these things are all motivated by fear. Uh, so it's so kind of greed a... greed is the fear of you won't have enough. Yes. I don't have enough, I need more. Or that status, that, that search for status because you feel insecure yeah. you or feel, something like that. You feel, that's a fear. Yeah, you need sure. power. Right, or you need control. I haven't, I haven't um, heard that before. Uh, ill will and delusion, like these things are all motivated by your fear. And this is yeah. something that's true. Anger, rage, these things are usually motivated by fear. Um, it, it's kind of a tr tropey Star Wars line. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Sure, sure. But it's very true. That it's is kind of the true. hierarchy of emotion. Yeah. At the root of it, when you really get to someone's anger, when they're outbursting and they're going crazy, it's usually because they feel insecure about something or they're afraid of something. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to fight to protect themselves. So fear is the motivating factor that drives all of those negative things. Yeah. All yeah. the roots of evil. Um, so there is nobody in the movie that is supposed to be evil. They're right. just... They're just afraid. The roots of evil are yeah. taking hold, and they're, they're, it's because they're all afraid. And wow. yeah, it, yeah. It's, it, it comes up <laughs> so all cool. the time in this movie. It does, movie. yeah. Even from early on. And I, I just love the way it's worked in. So we're going to be looking at that we as will. we go scene to scene. This but. That reminds me of uh, just in the Western tradition in the Bible that basically faith and fear are opposites, right? Yes. That yes. the opposite of fear is faith, according to you know, yeah. according to Christianity. And Nausicaa's arc <clears throat> in this movie. I mean, she already was this way, but there's one key pivotal moment yeah. where then she goes, "Oh, I can't go that direction. That's yes. a root and, of evil." And that's one right. of the things you were talking about, where it's explicitly called out. Yes, like where she says, "I'm afraid of what I will do yes. when I'm afraid." Like yeah. it's it's that kind of thing. I it's didn't like realize that she my fears fear. fear itself, which yeah. according to Lupin in <laughs> Harry Potter, third Harry Potter movie. R.J. Lupin says that is very wise to yeah. fear fear. Yes. If you have to fear anything, make it be the source of right. Yeah, and so she decides to turn away from that and not 
she acts with faith for the rest yeah. of the movie. Yeah. Everything she does motivated by faith instead yeah. of by fear. So that's kind of the heart of what this story is, is getting at. And so yeah. we'll examine that as we go. The, the, um, the world is so beautiful, but in the most bizarre and strange way. Yes. Now, I have to say that I didn't, I did watch this movie probably around 2005 when Disney bought it and put mm -hmm. it out. Because I was, I, I don't know, I was young, 16, 17, something like that. Yeah. Um, or 18, maybe. Um, I had heard all about this movie and how good it was mm -hmm. from, you know, my anime junkie friends, you know, <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, you know, friends who were way into that stuff. And I had watched, you know, a decent amount of anime. So I was like, yeah, dude, I love this stuff. I watched Nausicaa and I don't know exactly what I was expecting, but I didn't like this movie that much. Mm. I was, I was pretty disturbed by it. <laughs> um, and it's probably just a feeling of yuckiness because the bugs are so gross and the fungus, fungus and well, bugs. Can you do something cool like Star Wars where it's like monsters and, and that spaceships? That plays into what we're but, talking about. I, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. And, and that, but because of that, the, pre the presentation of the film, I was so not ready. I wasn't ready for this movie. Yeah. So this is only the second time I've ever watched it. Yeah. And it's been like almost 20 years, you know? And I'm just like, I cannot believe how good this movie is. <laughs> and I can't believe, I can believe that I actually didn't like it when I first saw it. But I, I, I can't believe how wrong I ended up being. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I, I, I really thought this movie was overrated and that, that it was just weird and gross and ew. <laughs> and it is that, but so is life, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's so, yeah, this movie is so good. But I, yeah, I didn't like it when I was young. Yeah. My wife told me the same thing, because I was like, oh, we're watching Nausicaa this week. And she goes, oh, sweet, I didn't like that movie. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't either, we'll see what happens. And it turns out, man, did, did this, is, this might be the best of, of Ghibli's work for sure. But yeah. Ghibli's work is up there, so that's yeah. saying something. Did she end up liking it better? Um, I didn't watch it oh, with her. Watch I it. ended up having to watch it um, elsewhere without yeah. her. Um, yeah, I wrote here that life has thrived in this post apocalypse, right? Now, that idea was yes. actually inspired by the poisoning of Minamata Bay. Have you heard of this? Mm. So there was a big uh, so. chemical factory mm. in the 19. 20s yes, I have. I do know about through this. Through the 50s yep, and 60s, yep, yep. and they were dumping their chemical waste yep. into the bay, yep. and it was it was full of mercury, An environmental disaster, which yeah, the that was, fish were infested yeah. with. So all the fishing and then the villages were eat eat, the and fish. They, they got this terrible neurological disease yeah. from that. Anyways, um, but so th so that was a big inspiration for the life thriving in the poisoned environment yeah. thing. But also, it actually gives me um, images of Chernobyl. So oh, like the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in uh, Ukraine, because in Ukraine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which was part of the Soviet Union at the time, yeah. um, they had to evacuate this area, which mm -hmm. has just been a no-go zone for forty years. Now? Pretty close. I think it was nineteen eighty-seven that it happened, or maybe a few years. So thirty, yeah. thirty-five years. Yeah. And, uh, but there's tons of plants and animals thriving there yeah, yeah. amongst the radiation. Where humans won't Which it's, it's just like, wait, how is this possible? Yeah. But life does this. Like life finds a way life to purify finds a way. Yeah. the pollution that we create. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And so, yeah, like Chernobyl, it, it gave me images of Chernobyl seeing like this beautiful thriving life amidst yeah. this ruined poisonous sort of like world, right? Yeah, that's Again, that crazy. duality. Yes, exactly. That's going on in the, in the imagery and the symbolism, so. Yeah, and that's almost like the beauty of, um, the beauty of life. Yeah. You know, in the, and, and how diverse it is. Yeah. In this part, I say, the nature here is made of nothing but the lowest life. When yes. you think of fungus and bugs. Yes. These are the lowest of the low, right? Mm. Yet through human things, <laughs> it became they have become the biggest of like the big, the <laughs> right? The highest of the, of the hierarchy. High. Yeah. yeah. Now all of a sudden, the top of the food chain yeah. is are 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 bugs and fungus, you know? Yep. And it's like it's an inversion of the way the world is supposed to be, yep. right? But it, it's just so beautiful. That, so there's definitely that, like that's definitely intentional for yeah. sure. Yeah. The parasites, the insects, the fungus. Yeah. You know that which decomposes and consumes that which decomposes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mankind now live off the husks of insects, and we are now the invasive species. Mm -hmm. Mankind becomes parasitic to the ohm's shell. 
Yep. So the ohms will shed and we'll go steal their stuff. Yep. <laughs> It's, yeah, the reversal happens. It's, it's a complete really reversal. Cool. Now, you could argue maybe silkworms or something. Or it's like, okay, we do take things that bugs make. But this is on a different level. Yeah. This is clearly us parasitizing the bugs in, in a way that humans never do. Yeah. So, yeah, it's actually beautiful the way they do this. Yeah. And, of course, what do we do? We make weapons and tools out of their husks, right? Mm -hmm. That's just how mankind goes. But yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. what's beautiful is, is death. Yes. It's the death. Right, because you can't breathe it, you'll die. Yeah. Right. So the death is beautiful. It's fascinating. She says. She says this. She goes. It's beautiful when the when the spores, the spores snow are down. Like snow. Yeah. When she's just chilling on top of the the <laughs> husk of the the ohm, yeah. um, she says your lungs would rot in five minutes without a mask. It's and beautiful. She's, yeah. It's, and it's so like, cool. <laughs> what? In the, who? Who is this woman? But also, just surrounded by beautiful death, mm -hmm. which is like. It's eerie. It's so eerie. So eerie. Yeah. It, but it, 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 imagery wise, it's just. Oh, like but it's so beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. To, to fantastic. Watch. Fantastic. Yeah. So she hears some explosions. She realizes something's going on yes. out there. Well, that's what I had written down here. So I said she's so close with nature, you can tell. She doesn't see, hear, smell, taste, or touch anything because she's got gloves and a mask and all that stuff. But she could tell danger was nearby before any physical manifestations. Mm -hmm. So she wakes up from her sleep and looks around, and then you hear an explosion, mm -hmm. right? Yep. She was attuned to she's it before like it happened. She's in tune with nature. That, yeah. Exactly, that's what it shows. She mm -hmm. is in, she's someone who's in tune with nature, right? And you know, the, the, we've talked a lot about yin and yang in the past. Yes. Uh, yeah. But there's, there's some of that going on here, and I'm gonna get yes. to this note much later well, towards the end, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, she embodies the feminine part of yes. the of the what do you call it the yin or is it the yang? It's well, sorry, yin, yin and yang. The yin. The, the yin, yin is the, the black. Yeah. yeah, she she really embodies that. The character Nasuka does, yeah. like all of those uh, elements of the yin. She does. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, all of Miyazaki's works. It's usually a, a yeah. woman a, or a girl, a, t a young girl, yeah. that is the protagonist in his films. Yeah. And and he obviously has a very environmentalist kind of side to him, you know. Yeah. And so using women to, um, you know, tell his stories in in a very feminine way, one and, and a very natural way. It's beautiful. He does it better than anybody. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to circle back to that more towards the end. I, I put a note here. Um, so she goes out to see what's going on, and she sees that an alm is chasing somebody. And so she yeah. knows she's going to go help. But there's another thing. Uh, the music that plays, like as she's sort of like flying and trying to distract this alm or like get it to calm down, it sounds like Final Fantasy boss music or something. <laughs> I questioned the music for a while. Now, by the end of the film, the music is so good. I love yeah. it. And Joe Hisaishi, he's good. He's, he's very good. Yeah. But... Um, there were times in this movie where I was like, dang, that 80s synth is it's, really it's coming synth in strong. It's synth 80s and drums, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, it kind of sounds like a Final Fantasy V boss music does. or something yeah, it like that. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> so, you know what I love, too, is she's running away. She steps on a, a bug, and she yes. says, sorry. Oh, yep. She goes, oh, I forgot about and, that. That's right. She apologizes to the yeah. bug. I just, I, this, is, it's, this is so good, the way they created her character. Yeah. I love it. Um. It's, I, I, I wrote, it's important to note how never, even for a second, as this, as Lord Yupa is being chased and these mm -hmm. Chocobos are being chased by this Ohm, did she have any thought of killing the Ohm to protect him? Right, Not right, once. right. once. She was like, oh, I've got to calm it and I've got yes. to like lead it back to its natural habitat. Like, yeah. not once. Like everybody else in the movie, as soon as they feel threatened, they're, like, they're pulling out their guns and they're firing that, yeah, and they're pull shooting. The trigger. She never does that, right? She's, she's just like, okay, I'm going to calm it. So she uses a, like a, a little charm that she has, and she yes. uses some grenades to stun it to get it to like wake up out of its rage. Yes. She just yeah. leads it back to the forest leads again. Leads it back. And y Yupa is like really uh, gobsmacked by this, just like, yeah, wow. She was impressed. able to, you know, defeat this Alm with a charm and with some grenades, yes, some flash yeah. grenades. Yeah, yeah, just for the noise and flash factor, yeah. Yeah, like no attempt to do yeah. any real violence or harm to it. She was able to just fix that situation. And I love it because this also shows that she can communicate with nature. It's not one way. So not only does she perceive nature and does uh, can it communicate with her in a way that she's receptive to, but she can reciprocate. Yeah. She can communicate back. back to them and and 
influence things at least subtly but enough mm. to where because it, it takes a little bit you know and you really think that that dude is like in trouble for lord yupa yeah but um she's able to kind of do things no one else can yep right and that's her connection with and nature and speaking with the yeah. insects and things like that like yep. speaking directly to them and now we find out um why he had two chocobos yeah so he was in there, you know, he, his kind of role in the movie, he explains this a little bit later, but he's, he's trying to understand the toxic jungle, understand whether or not man is really, mankind is really fated to succumb to this thing or not. Yeah. Can we find some way to slow its spread or stop its spread? So he goes on these, uh, you know, um, excursions into the toxic jungle to try to like learn more about it and study it. Um, while he was in there, he thought he saw a human baby being carried off Mm. by one of the insects and so he felt he was forced to pull out his gun because mm. he was afraid, right? He was right. afraid of something he didn't understand yeah. and he, he fired at the insect and it turned out it was actually a fox squirrel baby, not a human baby. And mm. that was what enraged the Om to chase him out. Yeah. So yeah. his fear of something that he did not actually understand, that he didn't understand. caused him to do violence yes. which then brought the retaliatory uh, actions of the Om. So what's so great about the next scene is that Yupa's talking with Nasuka, they're catching up, and she knows him, and he's a very well-respected figure in her village, in their kingdom, because um, she's the princess of the Valley of the Wind. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole kingdom unto itself. Yep. Um, he tells her that story, and the fox, and she's, she tries to call to the fox squirrel. Right, he's got it like locked in a, in a pouch, you know. Yeah, and he and she's tells like, oh, her. Let me see it. He's like, Ugh. he's like, these fox squirrels are vicious. Yes. Even the babies, like, you got to be really careful. Yeah. And so it's all afraid. It mm -hmm. is afraid. Yes. It is scared. This is the microcosm of the whole movie. Yes. Is here, this and scene. She says there's yeah. nothing to be afraid of, and yes. it bites her. Yep. Right. Now, normally, a person, when they get bit, you would react, oh, how it's mm. react back you to You almost it. can't help it. Yes. Because it's nature. The natural thing yes. is your, you, the reaction happens before the mind. Yes. But see, she's one with nature. Yes. She's in control of nature, which means right. she can control it. She doesn't, she doesn't do the reactive thing. Yes. So she lets it hold the bite. And yeah. though it's painful, she goes through that. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. Me. And it hurt. waits. It calms. Yeah. And then it starts licking the blood. Yeah, I loved yeah. that. Yes. And then it becomes her best friend for the rest yes. of the movie, right? And it could it could fear. So f th what this shows is that fear compounds. Fear builds. Yes. So if you're afraid, then it's more afraid. And then you're more afraid because it's more afraid. Yes. And, and it escalates, right? Yes. Whereas right. once the animal could sense that she's not afraid and that she wasn't going to hurt him, it's like, well... Then I'm not afraid either. Yeah. It also de-escalates by the same logic. Things fear can de-escalate. Yes. So it goes what back it to that Buddhist so good. symbolism of the roots of evil. Yeah, but yeah. The, but roots, right? They feed on soil. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the root isn't the bottom. The, the, There's more. The, the, the roots feed on fear. Yeah. The there roots you go. of evil like feed like on that. fear. That's yeah. where they get. Evil gets its nourishment from. Yes. Right. Oof. <laughs> and so. If, if you can calm the fear, if you can get past the fear, if you can dispel the fear, then you need not be afraid of evil, right? Is kind of the whole message of the movie. And it's literally in almost every scene of the movie, mm. in some form. And here, like you're saying, a whole microcosm of it. The fox yeah. squirrel was afraid, it bit her, it did violence. Yes. She didn't retaliate the violence, she calmed it, and then, oh, it's okay. And everything's okay. And it sounds so simple. But humans are not built this way. Yes. We, we do not fear, respond like this. Fear rules our life. Yes. Fear is an emotion that obviously evolved for a yeah. reason. I was going to say, for good reason, <laughs> yes. fear rules our lives. And yeah. it, it, it is helpful to survival, but it, you can't let it rule you. You can't yes. let it take over. You can't let that yeah. emotion, because it can take away your ability to think yeah. critically. Oh, and yeah. you do a lot of things you regret if you allow the fear to control right. you. I mean, think even evolution-wise. Think of, you know, there's a caveman who's in this community of people, but he's afraid to, to um, let anyone in. You know, he's afraid to open up. He's afraid to trust anybody mm -hmm. because, oh, they might betray me. Yes. Well, have fun living on your own, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, at some point, you got to get over that. You've got to yeah. trust. And yeah, you might, you might get betrayed. But your fear of getting betrayed is worse than 
actually getting betrayed. Yeah. It's the fear of it that's keeping you isolated, separate mm -hmm. from everybody, right. and on your own. Yeah. And p humans do better in a community. So, so there's like a balance, right? But what this is showing is that you skew that away from fear. Like you, you, you don't need fear when you have something to have faith in. Right. Right. Then you, you don't need the fear. The function that fear fills is is just unnecessary now. Right. And so back cavemen needed a balance of it because there might be a tiger in the bushes. Yeah. But like there, there, you do come to a point where it's like you can drop that. And part of that is getting rid of the fear of death. Right. Because if you don't fear death, then yeah, maybe there is a lion, right? Yeah, right. But as long as you don't fear death, nature will run its course. Right. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that like, and I, you have good reason to, to not, or to be afraid of the lion. But if you allow that fear at that point, then it kind of just, it grows, you know, right. and it consumes the rest. And and the self-sacrificial nature, this was my note here, mm -hmm. um, as the, the fox squirrel, yes. is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. um, as it bites her, um, I said, she lets it bite her. This means she's self-sacrificial. Yes. She will give of herself to nature, and that's how she gains the love and trust of nature back. Yes. It's by sacrificing, but you don't get to be, you don't get to the point of sacrificing if you're afraid of death. Yes. Because then you're gonna withhold your sacrifice, and you're not going to, you're not willing to do it. And, and anyways, yeah. it just goes from there. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, <sighs> so Yupa ends up asking her about her family and she reveals her father is sick, uh, he can't fly anymore. That the fact that they live near this toxic jungle, it takes its toll over mm -hmm. time, right? So like she says it's the fate of everyone who lives near it. Like eventually you're gonna you breed some of these slowly. spores and you'll slowly get this petrification yeah. sort of disease that overtakes Cause you. Cause he asks about her father and she says yeah. that he can't fly anymore. Yeah. And it's like, oh, is that, you know? Yeah. She's like, yeah, you know, everyone's time comes, but living near the forest makes it worse. Right. Um, then she kind of flies off. Yep. And, and he comments that she can read the wind very well. Yep. Right? She just glides on so that So once wind. again, yeah. she can also read the wind. She is yeah. born of mankind, but also of nature, right? She resides between the two worlds, keeping them both in contact with each other. Yeah. Because once you isolate the mankind from nature, um, then you have problems. Yeah. We're talking about this in Final Fantasy X a lot, right? You, you need them, they need to meet. They need to understand each other and work together. Yeah. They can't be separate, right? Yeah. Because one will consume the other right. and they will both suffer because of it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the fact she can read the wind is great because Nausicaa of the Valley of the Winds. I write this later on, but I can bring it up now. There is a wind god <laughs> yes. that she prays to and that the valley seems to worship the god of winds, right? And she, this is where a lot of the faith comes from, right? That it is faith in something that, that transcends her. Um, that it is, it is that the windmills here and everything is, everything's built around wind, right? So she's got her little airship. You always see the wind blowing. They talk about how the wind protects this valley. So there are valley near the lake, but the winds blow away. So the spores can't come in there mm. because the wind that keeps things moving is blowing away and out from the valley. And so the spores, so the wind literally protects their valley. Yeah. And, and the windmills, I don't know exactly what the windmills are for, if they're mills or if they're doing something else, but they seem like, like shrines or something like that to the wind, mm -hmm. that there's a little bit of a, like a worship thing going on there as well. Uh, but she would then also, you could say that if she is Nazca of the Valley of the Winds, she is the princess of this valley, that she would almost be like descended from the divine, right? Yes. Like that she is, she has part of the divine nature in her, which would be the god of the winds. Yeah. Oh, I love this and that's man. why she can ride those winds. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so Yupa arrives. I thought it was really interesting mm -hmm. that like the people all gather around him and they're, they're like asking him to name the baby that was born and stuff. Oh, yeah. It, it almost gives off the, uh, like the idea of a clergyman visiting, yeah, yeah. It's, but he's not that. He's just like a really famous swordsman guy. Yes, he's just a really good fighter. Yeah, <laughs> but he's yeah. just well respected, and everyone really likes him. So it's like a godfather kind of thing. Yeah, he's, he's like the yeah yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, you see the valley in which they live, and they they have like these. Everything's really purified here, and and they're protected because the wind blows from the sea and blows the spores away yes. from the valley. That's how yeah, that's the point. their valley is as pure as it is and not yeah. you know, corrupted by the spores and things like that. Um, so it's, it's really cool the way they've kind of set up 
their little village where they live. Yeah. Um, he ends up going to talk with the king, who is Nausicaa's father, and his name, what the fetch was his name, Jill? J-I-H-L, Jill. Hmm. So Jill's asking about the other kingdoms. Uh, yeah, Yupa tells him that, you know, the ones that aren't getting overtaken by the toxic jungle are at war with each other, mm -hmm. and there's all this bad stuff going on out there, um, which seems this village has been mostly untouched, but clearly that's not gonna last much longer yeah. with these warlike kingdoms. Mm -hmm. um, and the toxic jungle spreading as fast as it is and kind of overtaking everything. And this is where Obaba, who seems to be some kind of like a caretaker or local shaman or She's like a like shaman, that. yeah. Because yeah. she's blind, I think, right? Yeah, she's blind. Yeah. She talks about the prophecy of the man in blue who was supposed to come and restore mankind's connection to the planet again. Um, that, that Yupa, she says, is out looking for this person and he uh. denies that. He's like, no, <laughs> I'm just out looking to understand the toxic jungle and whether or not right. mankind can survive this or not. But there's like a mural in the room where she kind of, she uses to explain the story and Nasca's grown up, you know, knowing about it. But she's like, oh, I thought yeah. it was just a myth. And all <laughs> myths and legends. <laughs> all myths are true, man. If you're a JRPG player, all myths and legends are 100% yes. accurate and true. Yeah. So This anyways. one had one slight modification, but other than that, it was true. Yes. Uh, so it introduces the prophecy of the, the, the person in blue who's going to come and like, you know, end the thousand years of darkness. Yeah. Because it's been I've a thousand years since the destruction of the planet, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not total destruction, but destruction of civilization. I think it's interesting that um, I'm, this may be the scene before, because I just wrote this down. This may have been the scene before um, with Lord Yupa, but they laugh about near-death experiences. And they just take, uh, things, yes. they take things very lightly. Yeah. So after what had just happened, they were oh, laughing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because they were laughing about it. Yeah, the, the one guy was saying, I don't like that Nausicaa goes out. In, in explores like this, it's dangerous. Yeah. And the other people are like, well, we want the arm shell more. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, because she shows them the, yeah. she has tidings. Hey, here's yeah. the glass eyeball shell. Mm -hmm. And then Lord Yupa's the like, is. I agree. Who's going to save me if she doesn't, she's not allowed to go explore kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. From the I own. love that. Yeah, it was good stuff. Uh, okay, so then that night, this is where, this is a really cool shot too. You just see like the lights because again she hears something or she senses something's wrong, the, the, something in the wind. Or you know she goes outside and they're like, oh something's not right. The wind's blowing like crazy. Yes, and the wind changing. This is yeah. This is the the god. Their god is trying to tell them something. Right, and then you just see the lights from this massive airship Huge. just like appro approaching and flying over the top. Yeah, it's such a cool shot. Yeah, that was super cool. Um, I didn't know what to expect. But I wasn't expecting that. And she hops onto her glider and flies after it, and she's trying to tell it, you need to turn. But she sees it's being attacked by insects. Yeah, it's got insects all over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they can't, she can't talk to it. They probably can't even see her. Yeah. It's like this is a doomed. So it crashes and lights on fire and explodes. Yeah. There was a girl there was that a she princess saw, a princess something. from yeah. Pegite, that yeah, she yeah. saw on the ship before it crashed. She finds her in the wreckage and tries to save her, but the wounds are too terrible. Yeah, they're pretty bad. And... The princess says, uh, begs it. her to burn, burn all the cargo, burn, all. burn everything. And she says, well, it's on everything. fire. And the princess is like, well, good. Yeah, like, thank God, yeah. I think she says, right? Yeah, yeah. And she dies. And so her name was Lestel. Or Les yeah, Lestel. Um, and it's interesting to me how much this girl she just met, like, it affects her when she dies or when she oh, sees yeah. the wound and she, like, buttons it back up again. Yeah. It, like, makes, it, like, she ends up crying, you know. She, it really affects her, this death. Um, so, again, her, her nurturing, kind nature, this, this, all these principles of the yin are, like, very mm -hmm. strong in Nausicaa. Yeah. Um, I, I found my note, by the way, the reason why I felt like the, the windmills were more like a shrine. It's because the, as they turn, it's just a reminder that the wind is. Oh like, yeah. So the wind is ever present. Those windmills are going, and it's just a reminder that the wind is there. You know. Yeah. So you can see it visually. I think that's pretty. Yeah, cool. they probably um, use them to you know, uh, grind their wheat and things like that too, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> um, I wrote here as as that princess dies that she can heal the insects one way or another. 
but she can't do the same for humans, it seems. Yeah. Right, so her power is, she she communicates better with, with, with nature or with the fungus or the insects than she than she does with other people. Yep. She doesn't have the same uh, the power, you know. Now I liked how when one of the insects emerges from the wreckage, yeah. the first thing all the men do is panic. Kill it, kill it, kill and it. Pull out their guns yes, and, she, and they're like, oh, oh. It's like their, don't their do their that. Fear yeah. immediately takes over and they, they're trying to kill the thing. Yep, and she, yep. she saves it. Like, no, yep. don't. I wrote this quote down, no telling how much we'd suffer for even one single insect's death. Yeah. Right, but they said it's calling for more. Yeah, because it it's, it's like, like some sound. kind of signal. It's like, oh, they're yeah. gonna swarm now. We so she's like, I'll take it back. Yep, so she uses her little charm. And in their defense, I don't know that who, who else around there flies other than her? Like they do have their big airplanes, yeah. but like it would be difficult for anyone other than her to take that thing back, yeah. you know? It's like, we gotta think of solutions It's a good now. question, because she said, oh, my fa father doesn't fly anymore. I wonder if he was like, yeah, was he a plane or was he that glider thing? Like a glide, glide you pilot, to get. glider pilot or whatever yeah. before. Um, you would think more people in the village would be that way if they were the, the, the wind people, right? But Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so she takes it away. Yep. And then the next day, uh, they're searching. I really liked this. That all the people are out in the, in the groves searching for spores. Yeah, because something foreign showed up and now yes. they need to, to purify... Like, if we don't yeah. get rid of any Every. single spore that that shit might have brought with it, like yep. they're dead. Like, yeah. So it, it's it like, spreads so fast. It really reinforces how dangerous this world is that they live in. Even in their little peaceful corner of it that they yeah. that they found, like they can't let a single spore survive in that grove, or else the entire uh, their entire forest and all of their uh, crops would basically be destroyed yeah. like that. And the air would become toxic, and mm -hmm. that would be that. And they would, and just like all those other villages we saw at the beginning that Yupa was exploring, they would just be totally taken yeah. over by the fungus, right? Exactly. And anyways, the next day, this is where a bunch of to, uh, what was it, uh, Tolmekian ships? Yeah. Come and land, with no regard whatsoever for. I know they if hit. Landing on well, that's the or, thing. They they don't have regard for for you know the god of the winds. They hit that windmill, yep. just Knock break it. And then they land just right in the middle of like the fields and stuff. Mm -hmm. And everyone's afraid. She's telling everyone to get back to the castle. But these people, they're like stormtroopers. Like they show yeah. up and they're just like, they have a job to do and they don't care. Yep. They, they're, and the first thing they do is go to the king's the king. room, Jin, and they, or Jill. They kill him. And they, they just, just kill him. shoot him. Yeah, that was and crazy. Yas, or, or Nasuka comes into the room and when she sees that that has happened, when she sees her father lying there yeah. dead, her rage takes over. This is the one time, the only, the one and only time in the whole movie mm -hmm. where that emerges from her. Yes. And, oh, what is it? Because um, Yupa shows up, right? Yep. And because she's like she's, chicken people. and She's they're, fetching them up. <laughs> they're probably going to kill her yeah. if she keeps going. Um, and you know what I really she'll liked? probably kill them. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is going to start a war between your little village yeah. and it's just going to make more people die. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry your dad just died. That really sucks. But unless you want everyone else to die, yeah. stop. Yeah, stop. And, and that, that's what happens, right? So, so the anger and, and the, the resentment, it just, it just spreads until it just more people die because one person died, now more people are going to die. I really liked how when she was fighting, like all of their swords, like she's breaking their swords with her staff. Yeah, because it's of the um, material. It's the thing, whatever they call the, it. The alm shell. Yes, the alm shell. Is yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like the yeah. materials that they have in this village are way superior because they harvest them from the, the, the alm. And so like her staff, she, she literally like shatters the sword of, yeah. well, what's his name? Uh, like it was like, Kuratoa, the, like the, the, the second, general guy, yeah, yeah the second yeah. guy in command. He's, he, he's like fighting, and her, his his sword gets shattered, like yeah. in his face by her staff. So I, I really like that. But yeah, I love how Yupa jumps in and he mm. takes the sword yes. that she picks up and just it's again self sacrificing, right? Because it mirrored exactly the fox squirrel, mm -hmm. and he's not afraid. He doesn't nope. even flinch. He's just nope. like, boom, I'll take it. You were afraid. I know why you did it, and yep. you're angry but I'm not gonna show a reaction. Yep. And he, he creates the peace. He 
it calms everybody. Yes, yeah. by getting bit by the fox squirrel, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, that was so and good. So that was she so good. only really wakes up from this when she sees the blood, Yupa's blood dripping, dripping from down the sword, her sword. And she yes. realizes what she was just capable of doing, the fact yeah. that she was driven to kill, and yeah. it horrifies her, and, ash and she's ashamed of it. Right. And uh, she, she really has a, a moment of awakening here where it's like, I will never let that happen again. That yeah. can never happen again. The root of evil yeah. was was taking some nourishment from her fear yes. for a second, yes. and she just cuts the root. She cuts just it, unroots it entirely. And Yupa is heart. very logical. His yeah. explanation is very much like, "Let's talk this out." Yep. And you gotta very wait. Good. You gotta wait for the right time. Yeah. Like yeah. this is not it. Like this is yeah. this is going to lead nowhere. You have to. So the Tolmekians take over, and so you have. Uh, Kurato, I think his name was, but then uh, Kushana is the name of like the princess from Tolmekia who is here leading these armies. She's the golden knight like yeah. leader, right? She's like a princess, I think. She's a, yeah, a princess as well. So of course, she's gonna say that their goal is to unify the kingdom surrounding Tolmekia, oh, right? Yes, of course. We're here to unify. We're here to talk. We're not savages here to massacre you yeah, yeah. as we just killed your king. I know. <laughs> yeah. First rule of unity, kill the king. Yeah. Right? Kill the other leader, and then unity becomes the only option. Yes. Right? But yeah, that's a common thing. And then they act like it's, oh, we're just unifying. We're yeah. just unifying. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And so she details the plan here to unify the kingdoms, right, but also to basically burn the toxic jungle to, to put it to the torch. Yes, and they found a weapon yep. that's going to be a great and help in this job. That was what was on the ship, and I guess yes. we missed this from the night before. We did. Yupa, they found the box. And they, yeah. they see like a like an egg, like an incubated sort of yes. like mass. It's, it's Godzilla. This is yes. Godzilla. Because yes. even what it represents and where it came from and how it was unearthed and, it, and it, the potential that it has, um, it is basically Godzilla again. Yeah. Um, and but they're going to hope that they can use it, which is always the hope with Godzilla. Yeah. And the unfortunate answer is that no, you cannot. It will kill you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they found something that's basically like a nuclear bomb. Yeah. And they're like, good, we can use it now. And it's like, yeah. And so Yupa in, in that wreckage is saying, oh, there was a rumor that in Pegite, this one of the ancient uh, giant warriors was on Earth. Yeah. The, the, the thought had been that they had all died out and turned to stone a thousand yeah. years ago after the world was incinerated. But now it appears the rumor was true. They did find one there was under one. Pegite. And Tomikia had gone and stolen it from them yeah. and was going to use it as a weapon in their unification of the kingdoms and yeah. then in Forced destroying the toxic jungle. Mm, They're going to yep. use it to do that. So that's their, their goal here, right? Yeah. She says, I love this quote. I guarantee that those who join me will live without fear of the insects or the jungle's poisons ever again. So they're afraid. I mean, not to say they don't have a right, but that just explicitly states it. Yes, that is the we motivating factor behind what they are doing. Yeah. Fear of the insects in the jungle. Yeah. It's it literally, it's everywhere in this movie. It's Outright. crazy. It's so the, good. Their flag, it's a red flag and it's the om symbol, oh. which is the om, the yeah. beast, right? But also resembles, it's the two serpents, the dual yeah. serpents. So it's not quite a circle. It's almost a circle, but not yeah. quite. Um, and it's the two serpents. That's what their flag looks like. Um, the Greek letter for Om is, is that. And that's all, I wanted to, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, so I, but it also has, it's, all, it's divided by a sword in the middle. Though. Oh, There's like nice. a sword that's dividing the two. Yeah. Anyways, beautiful symbolism. So this, of course, this action would be the complete extinction of all the insects and life that has emerged from this toxic jungle. Yes. And that's, it's like a genocide, so to speak. It's what, two, right? two negatives, two rungs? Yes. Right? So you just add to the toxicity of the world right. once again. Yes. And that's all motivated Yeah, and it would be a fear. genocide. That's true. Yeah. Motivated by fear, they'd be willing to go that far, yeah. Yeah. right? So yep. the root of evil is taking root yes. in their hearts, in the Tolmikian hearts. Yeah. Uh, in Kushana's heart. And then there's a quick scene between her and uh, Kuratoa where we kind of see more of their real, like, true intentions of being there. Yeah. She says something like, uh, what a nice valley, I think we should keep it. Like, mm, that's one of the yeah. lines. Um, 
she doesn't want to take the giant warrior back to Tolmikia. She wants to use it for her own ambitions to start her own right kingdom. Right then and there, yeah. So she's like, I'm not taking it back to those fools. You yeah. Know? So she's beginning to harbor ambitions. Greed is taking mm -hmm. root, right? Yeah. Um, so she replant, she's planning right now to return to Pegite to report or something like that. And she tells the villagers to choose five hostages in addition to Nasca, who she's going to take. Yeah. Um, so hostage situation going on here. Um, Yupa goes to find Nasuka in a little secret lab she has in her little room uh, where she's studying these down toxic the plants. And he's like, whoa, what are you doing? How can you breathe down here all these, all these uh, pods? And she's like, don't worry. She's like, it's not the poisonous. The Because she discovered that with purified water, water. and soil yes, it's the water. that the plants grew from that they aren't toxic. Yeah. The reason they're toxic is because the topsoil on the earth was toxic. is toxic. So it's regurgitating the toxicity yes. that was already there, in fact, was placed there by the humans. Right, yeah. right. So it's the pollutants of the ancient civilization mm. on the soil of the world that these plants grow from, that that's, they're emitting toxin from that. Yeah. But, the, but the plants themselves, if put in pure soil with pure water, are not toxic. Yep. So I, I put a line here, but I can't remember what it was re relevant to. But the old woman is complaining as the soldiers are there. And um, Oh, right. I, I can't remember exactly what she says, though. She's saying that you can't uh, burn the jungle because all ah, you're going to do yes, is invite yes. the stampede yes, of the Yes, if you attack own. it, then they'll come and attack us right back. And right. then we'll be the ones who suffer. Yeah. Um, that I wrote down in my notes. says, the old woman is blind, yet she sees clearly. Yep, right. right. She's one of the few who can see clearly. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. and, and then she says, oh, how are you going to shut me up? Just kill me? Come on, just kill me already. Yes. You know? Kind of escalate. And they're and that's like, where stop Anaska's it, like, stop okay, it. No, You're going to escalate things? Yeah. But so, so. what, what Anaska did in, in this uh, basement room here is she's trying to find a way to cure her father, right? Yeah. So that's why she started studying these plants, right? right. Um, maybe she can do it, but it's not working so well. But what she did find a cure for was nature. And I mentioned this once again. When, when it comes to dealing with people, Anaska isn't as good. And this was, in, at least in part, they killed her father, so I get it. But when she gets upset and loses it with the sword, um, it takes Yupa who shows up, and Yupa knows how to deal with people. Yes. Yupa is very good at dealing with people. Yes, he's a right. negotiator. He's a, he's a smooth talker. He's reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Nausicaa knows how to deal with nature, uh, but the people part confuses her yeah. a little bit. And um, in finding out how to heal her father, she... Well, she sort of technically in a roundabout way found it out, but not directly. What she actually found out was a way to heal nature mm -hmm. or the way that ne she discovered the way that nature was healing on its own. Right. Um, but once again, her inability to connect with humans is um, because of her direct connection with nature. Right. right. So it's like one or the other. She has, right. a, she has trouble doing both. Yeah. A little bit, again, of yin and yang kind of happening. There, oh, right? yeah. She understands Absolutely. the yin yes. side of things more uh, than yeah, the yang. The yang, side of it's, it's a bridge to cross over for right. her. Um, okay, so the barge with the hostages leaves the next day, yeah. uh, and and as it's kind of flying, a Pegite gunship comes and starts taking them out. We were talking about the B fifty two bombers, you know, yeah, kind it of just shows ducks. up. And so they're all. Wait, is this the point where she says, "I'm afraid of what I'll do if I get"? She says that to Yupa before she leaves. Yeah. Before she leaves, yeah. yeah my note here: leaving. she said she doesn't know what her rage will make her do. Yeah, that's she good doesn't point. want to kill anyone. It's very interesting. She's analogous to nature itself, it seems. Nature doesn't want to kill anyone, but is enraged to the point of madness. Lots of parallels here. Yeah, right? yeah. I took down the quote. I'm afraid of myself, Lord Yupa. I yes. had no idea my rage could drive me to kill. No more killing. It has to stop. There you go. So, yeah. She, she turns away, cuts that root. <laughs> yeah. And, and turns away from and that goes. for the rest of the movie. And will never respond with yes. violence again. Yes, and she, she remembers that. And that yeah. was quite a memory. I mean, her yeah. father died there. So that's like, and she almost killed her friend, which is like, that, that's, a, that's a good memory to, that's a good thing to remember. Yeah. Right? To, fearing, if you never want to do that again. the fear. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, so their ship gets shot down and destroyed by this one little gunship, right? Mm -hmm. Just tears it apart, shoots down two of them, I think. And so it's all burning down. She's able to get out <clears throat> along with the hostages she, yeah, the and hostages, the princess. Because the hostages are being towed in like this other yes. sort of like ship thing. But it's like yeah. it's like attached with a rope. And that gets cut. That and so gets they're, broken. they're falling down below the clouds. 
she's getting out of the barge and as she's getting out, she offers Kushana, yes, come, I'll yep. save you, right? And Kushana jumps on the ship. She gets like a smile. <laughs> I wish they didn't show that particular shot right there. Yeah. Uh, but it's accurate. It's what she was thinking, I suppose. Um, like, hey, they have no idea. I'm going to betray them as yeah. soon as we land. It's too naive. Yes, right? very much so. Um, but yeah, so then they, they head on down and, and we see, I think he gets shot. The, the fighter jet gets, gets hit yes, in a moment because falls. she's trying to stop him. And mm-hmm. hey, stop shooting. And, he, and he's like, what? And he sees her. Whoa. But because of that, I think he ends up Yep, he ends up falling down, down below the, yeah, the clouds. So every, these people have all crashed. Everyone else is just dying, I guess. Um, so I love this next scene. Uh, I think it's Mito, who's like kind of the leader of the, the NPC um, the five valley villagers. Hostage yeah. people. He's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. leader of those dudes. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to tell them, hey, dump the cargo. Like, yes. It's going to be okay. And they're like, they're like, oh, we'd rather fall to our death than be eaten by insects. It was nice knowing you. We're gonna just, <laughs> we're just gonna die. And they're just, they're so afraid uh, of landing, yes, right? Yeah. They're so fearful of the toxic jungle that they'd rather just die in a crash or fall to death. Without, yeah, descending. And it takes mm-hmm. Nausicaa again, self-sacrificing, taking off the mask, showing her yes, smiling to face. to smile, yes. To see she has hope. To oh, put show. your mask back on. Like, we'll do yes. anything you want. Just like... But but it did. It calmed them down, yeah. and they were able to see because of her confidence, mm-hmm. right? And her confidence not only in dealing with them directly, but her confidence that nature isn't evil, um, that it was able to calm them down. Right? Yes. But then she immediately turns back and says, "Dang it! I inhaled." As soon as yeah. she put it on, it took a little too long yeah. for her to make her smile and to uh-huh. tell them what she needed to tell them. And so she breathed it in. And so it's like, oh shoot, what are, what's gonna happen because of that? Yeah. What are the ramica- ramifications of that? Yeah, so again, a self-sacrificing moment to calm people's fear. Yes, right? it's sacrifice it's, is it's, what it's she did. Every scene in the freaking movie, it's so the good. theme <laughs> is, so is good. in it, yeah, in yeah. some microcosm. Yes, the theme, yep, yep. Every, it's, yep. this to me is like pinnacle storytelling. <clears throat> Yes, you yes. know exactly what you're trying to say. Yes, the meaning of every, the form, the idea, the the reason for the story. Yes, is so well, like the the story is so well imbued with that meaning that every shot, every scene is just like a it's masterpiece. Saying that, and it speaks like yes. in in beyond words. You know, it's so good. this this to me is like the purpose of telling stories. The purpose and of art in general. It, this is how you know how to write scenes. Yeah, That's what should happen in this scene? You know, as you're sitting there as a writer. I'm writing the scene. Okay, how, what should I invent to happen in the scene? Yeah. Oh, it ninjas. Should, They're pretty cool. It should always, put some in. always be informed by your theme. Yes. It should always. be building towards making that case. That's your thesis the reason, of that's story. the meaning, that's the point. And yeah. this, it, every scene in the movie does it. Every yeah. single one. Including the next scene. <laughs> yes. Because as they crash, that's when Princess, what's her name, decides all of a sudden she's yeah. like, <laughs> she pulls out her gun yeah, and she she's like, gun I'm in charge here. And it's yeah. like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Why are you doing this? And and she says specifically, Nausicaa tells the general that she's acting like a fox squirrel. Yeah. That few who feels corner into fruit. What are afraid. you so afraid of? Yep. You're you like act like a little, a little scared fox a squirrel. Scared little fox squirrel. Oh, what did you call me? You and know? in order for Nausicaa to do that, she needs to not be afraid. Yes. In order to say what she's saying. Yes. Which is, yeah. So she's good. like, "What did you call me?" And then Nausicaa says, "Don't be afraid. Don't There's be afraid. nothing to fear. I just want you to go back to your country." It's all about dispelling fear. What is it? Be not afraid, only believe. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then as soon as, because they, they land in an om nest, right? And there's yes. insects And that's swarming. my next note. Nature also acts out of fear. That was my next, yeah. So they're like emerging. And, and what the first thing Nasca says, she kind of like keeps her from firing the gun. Yeah, she's like, Whatever you them. do, don't startle them. Yeah, don't there you go. make don't them scare afraid. Them. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Right? I love that. We need to dispel the fear. And so yes. she lets them sort of use their tendrils to like examine yes. her. And they can see some of her memories. Right? Yes. They communicate However, to her through this. However, there is a memory, because she's trying to show a memory of how, hey, I, I, I love you guys. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm one of you. Now, we mm-hmm. see more of the memory a little bit later, but at yeah. least at this part, it's like, she, she's like, I'm one of you. It's okay. I'm here. Um, yeah, so it's communicating with her as it examines. Uh, and it, it, she comes out of this saying, oh, the Pegite pilot is still alive. So it's like they told her, the general insects of the forest are upset because 
all the crashing ships, and then he's he's and shooting he's still them. alive. Gotcha. The, the Pegite. Because um, that is right where she goes. Pilot, she like beelines to him. Yeah, is like firing at them, and so okay. they're all pissed, and they're swarming him. Right. So that's where she decides to go try to help him, and she tells them like, "Don't wait for me. Like, get back to the village. Yeah, do what you can. Wait. Well, like yeah, we'll wait an hour, and if not, then go. And they wait too. Right. You know, but they have to go. Um, and yeah, she runs off to find this boy. Um, in her attempt to rescue him, right, the, the, the big sort of like, cent- no, not centipede, but oh yeah, Those type creepy. monster that's like tendrils kind of yes. like going after him to eat. <laughs> yeah. She saves him from that, but she gets knocked off the glider and they fall down below. Yeah, and her um, mask falls off as they fall. Yes, the mask falls off. And so it's like, off. Ah, uh, shoot, how are they going to get out of this one, you know? That they, seems like a death sentence. They right fall there. down below the roots of the jungle, yep. way down underneath into, the um, earth. Into like a sand. Like a cavern. It's quicksand or something. Yeah, 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 quicksand that goes yeah. down into like a cavern below. And this is where she finds out that the trees of the jungle are absorbing the pollutants, right? Um, and then those trees die and they yes. decompose into a sand that is purifying yeah. The soil and the water. Yeah. And I thought this was really interesting. Well, think about this. That's sacrifice. That's yes. self-sacrifice yes. on the part of nature. Exactly. Nature sacrifices itself for the rest of life. Yes. For, the rema- for humans. So while... Love it. So good. The people's fear of the toxic yeah. jungle was keeping them from understanding yeah. the situation. Yeah. They thought we need to torch yep. this jungle because it's trying to kill us. When in reality, it's trying to purify the world again. Yeah, so right? that they can continue living, yeah. I was recently looking up uh, methods for purifying water because I was studying this because I didn't understand, like, how did people from ancient times, you know, like, how did they drink water? How did water? they deal with all that stuff? <laughs> they just drink it from the Nile? Like, that's I, disgusting. Yeah, yeah. So what I learned is, is that uh, water purification has existed for a long, 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 oh, long, really? long, long time. Hmm. And basically, the idea is: is you you have like Lots grass of rocks, right? and sand, mm. sand, ah, okay. which goes in, and then you have pebbles and rocks and, and stones you just filter and it charcoal, through. and you pour charcoal water. makes sense because it's porous. Yeah. yeah, you pour the water through, hmm. and it, it it catches all the sediment yeah. through that system all the way down, and the water that comes out is pure and clear. Wow. And they've been doing this for a super long time. Wow. So that's sand, crazy. I didn't know that. the sand of these trees yes. purifying. I was wondering why there was sand. The there. water wells underneath the yeah. ground is the reason why all these people have water to drink in the first place. Right, because they're getting their well water. Yes. It's, it's under its water. They table. don't drink water from the rivers. Yeah, they drink yeah, yeah. it from the wells underground. Yes. And the, the jungle is purifying that water right. and the soil and everything. So yes, it's just it's dude, it's so good. It's so good, so good. <laughs> um so underneath the jungle, everything's clean. The air is clean. The soil is clean. The water yes. is clean. And these trees, like you said, are sacrificing themselves to yep. make that happen. For the greater of nature. It's this is great because this is, this is equivalent to the in the belly of the beast moment. Right? Yes, right. Yet, um, she descends below the depths and discovered a way to save humanity and nature, right? So she finds the beauty hiding within the chaos of the abyss, yeah. right? And, and it's there. Mm. It's, it, in some sense, it's always there. Like that's the idea of chaos or the abyss or, or going out into the extreme, you know? There is value, there's something there. You just mm. have to find it, right? And in the belly of the beast is where she finds like the circle within the yin yang, you know? There's the little part of it that's the, the value that's there and she found it. Um, almost like the analogy of how a lot of these movies will use exploring your own psyche, right? You right. go into the depths of your own mind and you pull out the, the valuable portion behind the shadow and all that, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what she's doing here. It's beautiful. Yep. So the boy, the Pejet so, pilot. Yes. His name oh, is yeah. Asbel. And he was the twin sister of Lestelle, the girl who died in the Ah, uh, yes. And that's why he was shooting those ships. He's yeah. like, you took my, my sister. I'm going to mm-hmm. kill you now. Yep. Responding yes. with fear, fear towards and anger the and, Tomikia yeah. and the anger yep. and everything yep. like that. Um, I love here how when, when Nausicaa explains to him what's happening with the purification and the, 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 what the uh, jungle's actually doing, he talks about how there's no way humans can survive long enough for the jungle to purify the earth. So we have to... We have to find a way to stop the jungle. And her response is simply like, you're just like the Tomekians, which he takes enormous offense to because we're mm. nothing like those Tomekians. Like, 
They yeah. want to take over the world. Like, they're evil, right? Like, we're, we're just trying to, do, you know... But... Yeah. As, His as fear would lead him to eventually yes. take over the world. And, yes, yeah. fear is what drives the need to know. take over the world Why do you the think the Tolmecians place? want to do it? Because they, you found yeah. the, the the giant warrior, yeah, and yeah. they feared you were going to use it. Yes, exactly. So they came to so get it. So now they're going to use it because they fear. Yeah, it's yeah. it's this freaking cycle with this, right? Yep, yep. Did you have a note there? Because I kind of cut you off for a second. I did, but it's when we come back to the general talking. Oh, okay. So that won't happen for a few minutes here. Oh, uh, we get a scene where the giant warrior fetus is developing. That's it. So that's where I put down. Yeah. Oh, it was an embryo, a giant embryo. This mm -hmm. is Book of Enoch type stuff. Yeah. Like this is straight up <laughs> Noah, Flood, Genesis. This is that stuff that's happening here. And it's it's the unnatural workings of man that led to the flood of Noah. Yeah. And that is what's happening. Yeah. It's it's a giant, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Very very good. Um, I like how when he hears about. Kushana's ship being shot down and, as, and assumes that Nazca and everybody died from that. Yeah. He begins developing ambitions himself. Greed starts oh, taking hold of He's like, him. oh, maybe I can be the leader now. Yep. Yeah. And especially <laughs> when he sees the development of the giant yes, warrior. Because now he has that power. He says something directly like, uh, you know, is that a smile or something? That this begins to awaken the ambitions of even an old, lazy soldier like me yes. or something like that, right? Yeah, just a, just a pure, poor, poor, you know, meaningless soldier. So he begins to think, maybe I can be a king with a weapon like this yeah, yeah, yeah. and have my own kingdom. So there's the greed and yeah. the, the envy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Mito and the other hostages, they've returned now. They send for y Yupa, who goes to meet them in this, like, ruined submarine-looking thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're, they have Kushana with them. And he, he's talking to her about the fact that we need to get rid of this freaking giant warrior embryo yeah. thing. We gotta bury it in the acid water or something. Yes. Yeah. And she's like, you can't do that. Like, yeah, you how do you think it lived a thousand years? Yeah, you can't like, kill this thing like yeah, that. Yeah, that's not happening. And then she says, I was ordered to attack Pedjite because we feared another kingdom would get a hold of the warrior's power. Once its existence is known, all the remaining kingdoms will send their armies here to claim it. Yeah. So if I were you, right, she says, the insects must be stopped. You must revive the warrior and use it to destroy them in their jungle. Steal it from us as we stole it from Pejite. That's what I would do if I were you. Because she's afraid of the insects exactly. in the jungle. If you were acting on fear the way I was, this, yes. is what, this is what you ought to be doing. And he, of course, says, nope, we're not yeah. going to do that. We're not going to use the warrior in that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love this. I don't know if you if you saw this. Uh, there's a kid kind of guarding the door here, and there's another kid who comes yes. running in. I remember. He's like, Lord, what's Yupa, the password? Lord He's like, hold on, <laughs> you got to give us the password. I <laughs> love that. No, no, oh, um, Miyazaki is so good at putting those little moments, the the children moments. Yes. In all of his movies, phenomenal. There's always it. these great moments of of just how kids. My neighbor Totoro is probably the best example. Yes. But just this is how kids act, man. And it doesn't matter if you're saving the world; they're going to try and have fun doing it. Yes. And and that's a nature of children, and it's beautiful. And Miyazaki just. He, he hits the nail on the head yeah, with those so little, perfectly with those, those. Little details, yeah. And you're not expecting it, no. you know? And it's just like, guys, come on, kid. But he's like an eight-year-old kid. What do you expect him to and do? And this is a pretty serious movie for the most part, pretty yes. heavy. Yes. So finding those moments for yeah. a little bit of levity is yeah. really important. And he just, it's just a little spike. It's not over the top. It's not no. like super and it silly. it only delayed him about five seconds. It wasn't like a huge yeah. delay. It didn't like de derail the movie for yeah, a second yeah. to like throw in some like <laughs> misplaced humor. Right. It was just enough, and it was really genuinely funny yes. and true to yeah. how kids are and yeah, how they absolutely. think. Absolutely, and it's just it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, More yeah. anime needs to like take notes from, from yes. this about how to do humor. You know, oh, like totally. In a, in a way that actually like makes sense. I mean, kids are funny. Just have kids in your show <laughs> and let them be kids, and yeah. the, the humor will write itself. Um, so then we learned that some of the spores were not destroyed in the valley. Yeah, they find a tree that's just pulsating with, mm -hmm. with fungi. And yeah. they're like, oh, we need our torches. We got to go. Yep. We got to go. Like, and, and one of the soldiers yes. says, like if we, give, if them we the give them the tools to destroy the spores, they could use them against us. Yes, fear, 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 fear. Every scene, dude. <laughs> Every single scene has this in it. It's so yes. good. And you know what's funny, though, is that you don't necessarily notice it until you yes. deep, deep dive analyze it like right. this. 
that it's not like it's obviously hammering into your head this this belabored yeah. point. It's like no, it's subtly put yes. into every scene. Yes. But it's not so obvious. Like right. it's it's really apparent upon deeper analysis. But when you watch this movie, you may not have even noticed more than a couple references. Yeah. But it's like there's 20. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And so uh, you know, Kurato is like we don't have a freaking choice. Like I'm more afraid of the spores we, yes, than I am need, afraid of the villagers. Exactly. <laughs> we gotta we gotta let them use the torches. But, but what they find is that the whole forest is the spore got the spores got into the roots and mm. all the trees, so they had to burn everything. They had down. to burn the whole thing down. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, upon returning to Pedjite, we have Asbel and Nasca now going there. Yes, but Pedjite is jacked, completely destroyed. Yeah. Aftermath of a huge battle, but it's not just a battle between Tolmikia and Pedjite. There were a ton of ohms, like ohms. dead ohms in yes. there. And it's like, wait, what happened here, right? There's spores filling the air. Yep. And uh, Asbel says something interesting. It's like, you know, it wasn't worth it or something. The price to pay was too heavy for what we got. And something along those lines. So he she's, knew. She's yeah. like, what are you talking about? He knew that the pe- that Pedja had led the ohms there on purpose yes. to kill the Tomekians that were yeah. uh, annexing Pedja. So... Yep. She learns this when a Pegite ship lands. Yeah, it lands, and they're like, Haha, our plan's working great. It's like, we can rebuild the city, like yeah. whatever. So right? they have found a method. We don't know what yes. it is. They found a method to control the ohms. Yes. And it's about the most inhumane method yes. that you can imagine. It's horrible. But but they don't see themselves as having a choice. Yes. We don't have a choice. Because the Tolmikians, they want to take over the world. They have to be stopped at any cost. I, anything is justified. Yep. Because they're so afraid of them. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and so that what they're planning to do is lead the alms into the Valley of the Wind. Because they've gotten word that, that of the what's warrior there. is there, yep. and they need to go get and it back. And the, the um, Tolmekians are there. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's like, "Wait a second. And they say we have to get the warrior back, no matter what it takes, all costs. And yeah. then, and then one of the other guys says, "We're doing this for the good of the planet. You've got to understand." And she's like. That's where I'm from. What the fetch are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna kill like all my villagers, all, all of my people. Like this is Th- insane. This is how higher up people in politics and in war in military. This is how they think, though. Yeah. And and in, in some ways, it's like you know, there's chess pieces on a board, but these are real people. Yeah. But you will lose everything if you don't play the game. Mm-hmm. You have to play the game, mm-hmm. and you have to determine which squadron is going to be the sitting duck, which one's going to be the distraction, and which one's actually going to do the fighting, and yes. which ones are going to be there just to die. Yes. And and a, a quote good general will be capable of making that decision without any emotional attachment. I get it. I do get it. But it's wrong. Yes. It's deeply wrong. Yes. And deeply and wrong. Y- yeah, you got to play the game to to live in the world because everyone's afraid and everyone's dying. But like it's that doesn't make it right yes. in any way. The right thing, idealistically, yeah. is to dispel the fear. <laughs> exactly. Is is to get everyone to calm down mm-hmm. and to like get to uproot those roots of evil that are feeding on fear. Get it's, rid of the fear. But instead, you feed on it and you have to play the game you're talking about in yeah. order to try to win or compete. To win, exactly. So he pulls a gun and he's going to try to defend Nausicaa. And he's, because they're yes. like, hey, we can't let her go back. Because she's like, I got to warn my people. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're staying with us. Mm-hmm. And so Asbel, I'm sorry. Asbel, yeah. Asbel. He name. grabs somebody's gun and he's like, let her go. But they just knock him out. They, yeah. deal, they deal with him very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ends up not really doing much. But, you know, hey, good for him. It takes yeah. a lot to stand up against your own oh, yeah. country, your own general people. Yeah. And, and, Threaten them to do the right thing, you know. Like that takes a lot of guts. So good mm-hmm. on him, but it didn't really do much. Yeah. So back in the village, back in the valley, uh, the villagers are now attacking the Tomekians. Yes, so it's just like, they just as they thought. They're using yeah. the torches as weapons. I mean, they they didn't have as many soldiers left over, right? And so yeah. like they're they're actually more evenly matched now. So they're fighting them. Yeah. <laughs> you get a good scene of some of those guys like trying to like maneuver a tank. And yeah, they take over a tank and they're backing <laughs> into the... it backwards. Oh, man. Just destroy that bridge. bridge. <laughs> so some good, you know, lighthearted moments kind of mixed yeah. in there. But um, Kushana arrives. And I love how Kurotoa says, well, that dream didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's got that face, that anime face of like, eh. It's like, oh, your highness. Back to my <laughs> mundane life. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah. Um, so that's happening there, and then we see Asbel's mother 
comes to try to help yes. Mosca escape. It seems like the women have been talking amongst the each Pedrite other. The women are great. And yeah, and they mm-hmm. have uh, determined that, hey, we're doing the wrong thing. Once and again, we need help. the yin yes, yes. understands or yeah. is able to sort of like navigate nurturing the, the, the chaos, I guess, side of things yeah. without fear. Yes. Much less so than the yang It's like an is. integrated thing, yes. So the men are being all violent and the women yeah. are the ones who being are... Being more understanding. Yeah. yeah, nurturing and being like, no, this is wrong, right? Yeah. And that's true of life. Men are usually more violent and more aggressive yeah. anyways. But so they, a, a woman comes in and they lend her that woman's dress and they kind of sneak her out with a hood. Yes. This is the point where her, her dress changes color. She's yes. not wearing a red this dress. Is, this is important. She's yes. got like a pinkish red sort it's of. It's a pinkish red dress. Yeah. With that symbol. It's a symbol of like a turtle or something. But yeah. um, it's it's a Pejite dress. Yep. Um, but the red, uh, it's beautiful because like we mentioned earlier, the, the, the red, red and the blue, blue mm-hmm. are very important here. The yeah. bl- blue meaning peace, red signifying Maybe the opposite of yeah, peace, like the right? alms eyes are blue, yes, and then they go until red until they get upset. When they rage and, and they, they blue again, red. yeah. So the blue and the red yep. coloring uh, to signify those two things. Yep. So she's got a red thing on now. So they let her escape. She jumps out. Um, I'm pretty sure he he has to push her out because the uh, the Tolmecans yes. show up, right? They, they show up and they start fighting. Yeah, it uh, becomes this huge thing, and she doesn't want to leave. But and I I I sort of. This is a moment where um, our character is a very a very perfect character who doesn't do wrong things very often. Yeah. And generally speaking, I have criticisms. I really don't mind it in this film. I don't. Yeah. Except in this one scene where, you know how, um, you know how in uh, like The Dark Knight, how Harvey Dent is like threatening Batman's kids, and that's when Batman. The only reason Batman made a move that resulted in someone's death was in order to protect. They had to push him to this point so that he would do yeah. that kind of thing, right? right. Um, it's it's a little bit of a, of a cheap-ish move in storytelling when the character, in order to preserve their, their spirit, their um, highness, um, they have to be forced to do the... Yes. The, the thing that they need to do to move the story forward, yes. right? She can't stay there, but it's not in her nature. She's a self-sacrificial. She would be helping fight. And so they, have the, they use the kid as a story mechanism to push her out so that she can remain her purity of always doing the right thing while at the same time not doing the right thing in this situation because she's got to go do something else, yes. right? So they deal with the conflict by having uh, a middle character um, do it, make the decision for her. Yes. Um, in some ways, it's just a touch cheap. That might yeah. be my only criticism, criticism of this of entire movie. movie. And it's not even that bad. Yeah. Like, I totally get it. But I'm just, as, as, as we're analyzing the film, I do yeah. see that as a moment it's, where it's, it's like... It's a convenience hmm. for the character not have to make a tough choice. To not have to make a difficult choice. Yeah. yeah. And to not have to be ethically uh, balanced, but in order to maintain their one-sided view of mm-hmm. only nature at all costs and only nature, right? Yeah. And it's like, fine, whatever. They, they do that and it works. Um, but that's how it happens. And as she's, as she's flying over, she says her prayer. She prays to the God of wind to protect her people. Yeah. But there's a, bit of a, there's a bit of a moment here where the wind kind of stops blowing at yes. this point in yes. the valley. And it's, uh, it's, it's a, what would you call it? A, my God, why hath thou forsaken me uh, moment. moment. Yeah. yeah, where all of a sudden she prays for the presence of the wind that is always there. Those windmills are always going. It's the mm-hmm. valley of the wind, right? Mm-hmm. And But at this moment is where the wind decides to, to stop, yeah. to slow down. Right. And wind is part of nature too. And so nature is coordinating something yes. that you know seems to be not in line with what she wants, but she's going to find a way to break the laws of nature, yeah. as C.S. Lewis would put it, yes. <laughs> in order to, to make it to make things work again, to offer you know a sacrifice that will that will be acceptable. So, yeah. anyways, freaking beautiful. Um, yeah. So the Tomakians are attacking, and the Pejite ship tries to go like down underneath the clouds. Yeah. But it's like a freaking disaster. There's like storm clouds and lightning everywhere. Yes. And they're like, oh, we can't do that. Go we back can't up. do that. And then it was like waiting for them, and so there's kind of this big battle going on. But yeah. it's a uh, Lord Yupa and Mito kind of coming in a gunship to the rescue to like take out that ship. Ah, that's right, yes. Right. I forgot about that, and, that's right. Uh, uh, and then Yupa jumps onto, because the Tomikins had invaded the Pejite ship, he like leaps on and he like 
busts his swords out. There's like one of my favorite <laughs> moments in the whole movie. Because there's like five people there. Yeah. He's just like, and they're like, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's Lord Yupa. Kill him and you'll be famous. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's like uh, for a reason. And he just like, boom, 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 and just like goes straight up to the commander. And yeah. they just like disarms him with ease. And it's like, it's so good. if you want to survive, I would like advise that you not try to fight anymore. <laughs> So, really great mm -hmm. Lord Yupa moment where he shows off his sword fighting skills. Really liked that. Um, oh gosh, this is a note here. I'm sorry, the Bible references are too, are too thick. But I put down, the, the day came when the God of wind ceased to strive with them, with mankind. But, this is a bit of a Sodom and Gomorrah reference actually. <laughs> Um, but even one person who understands, just one single person who is willing to do the right thing can save an entire town from destruction. Mm. And in this instance, she saved the world, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a clear reference to the idea that if you can find me but one person yes. who is righteous, I will spare the city, right? Yeah. And that is... That is like, this is how that works, yeah. right? And it's through, what is, what, what, so what, there's one person. Yeah, if you can find one person that will sacrifice themselves for the greater good and will get people to kind of see the, their ways, then, then yeah, there's hope. that's how it works. Which is in yeah. and of itself sort of a microcosm of the, the Christ story itself. Yes, too, right? oh gosh, like there's, one so, person, there's yeah. so much more. But yes, it is. Willing it is to, it one is person Christ. willing to sacrifice can save the rest. Exactly, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So they're kind of holding out the people of the village in that ruined submarine thing. Now, Kuratoa says something really interesting here. He says like, because Kushana asks what that thing is that they're hiding in. Yeah. And asking about it because it's like got this really impenetrable armor. That, that's why they're holding up inside of it because they can't be shot while they're in there. Yeah. And he says something about how like, it was a vehicle from the old world, the ancient oh. world. <clears throat> that could go anywhere. He says even to the stars. Ah, yes. So yeah, like yeah. this submarine was like a spaceship or something. Yeah, it was something it was else. Freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So apparently wild. the old civilization had spaceships. But yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, anyways, Kushan is holding off on attacking them because she wants to wait for Nazca to come back to see if she survived in the jungle. Yeah. She's clearly gained like a level of respect for her and like is yeah. a, a little bit conflicted not conflicted, that's not the right word. But it's like she's curious. She's, she's like, waiting. Is, is what she's going to do, like... She's waiting to make the decision on whether she's going to go the bloody route yes. or not yeah. based on, can I... Will Nausicaa show up? Yeah. I would like to get to know this girl better. Mm -hmm. It takes a little too long. Yeah. So she orders the attack and she says something like... Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. She... she she says to hold off, so they're not attacking it. And she goes and talks to those five dudes. Well, four, I guess, because Mito's not there. But four mm -hmm. of those, uh, the, our four NPCs from the village, dude, <laughs> yes. those guys. Exactly. And she says, if you go and convince them not to fight us, like, I'll let you live. And they say, it's strange that you're a princess, too. You're nothing like our princess. And mm -hmm. the other guy says, it's too uh, good. take a look at my hands. And it shows his hands, that he has got that same disease that King Jill had, right? Yeah, yeah. I have the same illness as King Jill. Six months from now, my hands will be as hard as rocks. But our princess told me that she truly loves these beat up old hands of mine. And when she looks at these hands, she sees that these are the hands of a hard worker. Yeah. And so they're just showing how different Nausicaa yeah. is to her, yes. this huge, like, difference between them. Is this where that princess then shows that her she's missing? Oh, I missed that. That was yeah. earlier. Okay, that was earlier. She showed that to Yupa. She's missing her she, arm. Yes. She she yeah. pulls her hand because she's cuffed, but she pulls her arm out because she... And that's she, how she escapes. She doesn't have an yeah, arm. We kind of glossed over that, but they prisoned her for a bit and then she Yes, escapes. she got out. Um, yeah. And her legs, too. Because uh, mm. she says something like, the, the lucky man who will marry me will see much worse or something like that, yeah. right? In fact, I think I took a note on that. Oh. I just skipped over it. Let me go back real quick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she reveals that her hands were taken by an insect, which is what drives her fear of the insects, right? The insects must be stopped. You have to use the warrior to destroy them in their jungle. Steal it from us, you know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, she, she, her arm is missing and her legs, because she, she was like fully decked out in armor for most of the movie. Mm -hmm. But by this time, at the end, she's just got her golden legs and golden arm. So it's yeah. like her arm and her legs were taken by an insect at some point. Mm. That's basically all, all that's left is like one arm and her torso and head. 
<laughs> so she got jacked. <laughs> yeah. Really, really jacked by an insect uh, at some point in her life. Um, so anyways, yeah, good point to bring that, but we kind of yeah. skipped over that. Um, oh, but I love this. They continue on saying, oh, oh, she says something about we have to destroy the, we have to burn the jungle, right? And they say, too much fire gives birth to nothing. Fire can reduce a forest to ashes in a day while it takes the water and the wind a uh, hundred yeah. years to grow one anew. We yeah. prefer the ways of the water and the wind. So yes, there you go. we learn to use fire to protect ourselves, but only in small Very amounts. Very sparingly, yep. Because we're not going to burn down a forest, right? Yeah. Like it's, we prefer the ways of the water and the wind. I really That's like That's part of that lines. balance though. It's not that yeah. you never prune the branches. It's not that you never use yes. fire. It's that you only use it in a, in a way that respects, you know, nature yes. so that they can respect each other. Yes. That's the idea of the yin and the yang and why it's a curved line. It's not a straight line. Yeah. They both kind of move into each other a little bit. Yeah. And they, one gives on one side and then takes and then the other gives on the other side. Yeah, just It's like symbiosis. Really wise words from these very guys, much right? So, very it's really so. good stuff. Okay, so that's when they notice the wind has died. Yep. This is something that's never happened in the valley before. Yeah, it's the valley of the winds for a reason. It, the yeah. wind is always blowing. Um, and so this is where we find out how the Pejites are manipulating the Om. Yes. They're like flying in this little pod. Yeah, she's flying and you can see that the glow. has a baby Om oh, that so is hooked. I mean, like, literally hooked, it's bleeding from the wounds. Yes. And they're just flying it like, a, like a carrot on a stick. And shouting, yeah. In front of the alm as they stampede. To, yeah. yeah. So she sees that and she's horrified by yeah. it, right? Um, so <laughs> Hito, because she's flying with Hito in the gunship, the first thing he tries to do is shoot them down. <laughs> I know, and it's like, stop <laughs> it. He's like, don't shoot, it's going to kill the baby. Oh, He's that's like, like, I'm sorry, you I'm have sorry. To say, he's like, what am I supposed to do, I think he says. Like, yeah. they're going to destroy the village. His fear is driving. And the thing is, he would never have thought to do what she does. Yes, exactly. It would never have occurred to him. And so she says... Um, Go warn the valley. And she says, well, princess, you don't even have a weapon as she leaves because they're just not getting it. They, like, nobody not, else yeah, is getting it. They don't it. connect. Like, <laughs> we're not going to solve this problem with violence. It's yeah. just not the way it's going to work. It's only going to escalate it and make it worse, right? It, just really great. The whole movie, no one, like you're saying, only the one person, the yeah. one righteous person in the whole world In the whole can world, it seems, this. yes. Uh, and it's not even that everyone else is that bad. It's just that they aren't like this. You know? Yes. They're, they're just afraid. They're just afraid. Yes. So this is where Kushana says, let's go, Kuratawa, hours up, you know. And he's like, he says something like, are you sure? So like, yes, I've chosen the bloody path. There and you so go. they begin to attack, but then Mito crashes right in front of them, and she thinks it's Nasuka. Yes. Never mind. Call off the battle. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she's she, Nausicaa being the angel, right? The bearer, yep. the messenger. Yep. But it was not. They run over there. It's not so. And it's not her. It's, so it's where's Mito. the girl? Where is she? Oh, the, these pedgites are carrying this arm. We've got to like really get ready. They're stampeding towards us. Like yeah. the arm are coming, uh, so they get prepared for that. Right? They're preparing to fight the arm if they come. Um, but she decides, Kushana decides, she's going to use the warrior to kill these old. Yes. And it's not ready yet. It's no, not No, it's still developed. like a fetus. It's still yeah. a, a not ready. And Kuratawa tries to tell her, like, uh, it's not ready. Like, you yeah. can't. And she's like, I don't, if, if not now, then when kind well, of a thing, Fair right? point. I mean, if they're going to destroy the whole valley. And I think there was some, whatever had happened here, there was some way to where it was going to be hard for them to get off mm. with to get off of the valley, to get out of the valley with the weapon. Yes. Because they're like, our ships it can't carry it. It's too heavy. Yes. So if we want to do this at all, just go go, yep. go big or go home, right? Now's, now's the time. All in. So then I, I love the way, again, self-sacrificing, the way that she stops these pedgites. It's unbelievable. She, she's flying, don't shoot at me. Like, I'm not here to kill you. Don't be yeah. afraid. Yeah, she's yeah. saying as they're firing <laughs> at her. And, and then she like, just comes straight at them. Standing. Standing on, the, on glider, the glider, just like. With her hands, hands out, out. Like, I'm not yes. attacking you. Yes. And, and the one guy's like, oh, because she's wearing Princess Lestelle's. Yes, the red dress. Red dress. Yeah. And he gets afraid for a second, like, oh, I can't shoot. Like, that's Lestelle. And the guy's like, whatever. And he knocks yeah, him yeah. over and shoots at her. So she takes a couple of bullets uh, to mm. the shoulder and then to and the her leg. her leg, I think, or and her she foot. She jumps. Something. 
onto it <laughs> yeah. and like takes you know takes the guy down and takes the pod down and crashes and then she goes to the baby om yeah. who is suffering this is what i put um Nausicaa is self a, is self sacrificial for the om shot hands stretched out she chooses to die for the good of the world yes. that that was her her choosing to die in the yes. like the likelihood that this was going to work was not yeah. high it works cuz it's a movie <laughs> but the the important part was that she um she chose to give her life in order to at least try to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. So her clothes were stained with her blood, her red dress, right? Mm -hmm. But it turns blue. Because of the alms blue Because blood. of the blood of, of nature. The baby. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the thing's bleeding. It's trying to, like, walk away. And she's like, don't move because it's, like, yes. bleeding. It's got, like, ten harpoons stuck yes. all over it. Like, really bad. You're going to bleed to death. Yeah. But then it, it sees the alm stampede coming yeah and it's like oh i'm gonna go to my people yeah those are the people but there's like an acid, acid water the lake is acid lake lake yeah yes. and so she again self-sacrifices to stop she puts it. her foot her foot goes in into the, the acid. acid i love that so much and this is when it finally calms down enough to use its tendrils to communicate with her yes. and like learn like what she's thinking and then yeah it calms down right so the self-sacrificing to dispel the fear is what likes you know Dis, d gets the om to calm down. Yeah. Um, but then, the om, which were coming towards them, they turn and they start going towards the village again. And she's like, "Whoa, wait, what's happening?" And it's because they're shooting at them. And then the the yep. the, the, the giant comes out. Um, so then she's like, the giant me warrior. There. Yeah. And and it it, it starts its a assault. It only <laughs> shoots two times. Yep. So these parallel the two atom bombs that were dropped on Japan. Uh, so boom, it shoots once, kills a bunch, shoots again, kills a bunch, and then just melts. Melts away. And, and is, is no more. This sequence was animated by Hideaki Anno. Oh. Who is the creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, no way. <laughs> nice. So it's completely oh, apt that that dude is the one who... And they they that, picked him the specifically monster, the, the to game. animate this very difficult sequence uh, really? with the giant warrior and the big beams and the explosions. Yeah. It, it, it totally looks dude. like something out of Evangelion, this sequence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure Evangelion, to a large extent, was probably inspired by his work yeah. time working on this movie. But um, yeah, I, I thought that was so apt that that wow. guy was the one who animated that yeah, who sequence. Who would have thought? So cool. All I wrote down is that, like, wow, humans are so horrible. <laughs> like, I just can't believe it. That yeah. the the way that that giant dies dies is, is, is so bad, and just everything about this is so. It's just it's just the worst that humanity has. And that's offer. the thing, though. It's like it's it's just all all of it would be avoided if people just not act on their fear. Right. If you just would stop acting on your fear, like all of these problems would not escalate to the degree that they do. And anyways, it's not, obviously it dies, it's not enough to kill them, they're still coming on, but then- Yeah, there's way too many of them. All of a sudden, they stop. Well, Nausicaa convinces them to take her over there with the baby on. Oh, right, one of the them, Pegite right? dudes, yeah. And she's riding with the baby, and she's like, drop me off, you can stay up, do whatever you want, just drop me and the baby off, and then literally in the middle of the battle. And yeah. they're like, you're crazy, but okay. So they bring her over there, and they drop her, and she's like, stop, once again. She holds her hands out, she's there, but the rage is too great, and they end up, they hit her up in the air, yep. and then they trample on her, and yep. she dies, basically, so she's dead. Um, there you go. Yeah. But then, then at some then point, at the some fighting point does they stop all stop. Because the baby is tending to Nausicaa, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, oh yeah, all the, all the other homes are around. And they, for whatever reason, I can't remember if something happened, but for whatever reason, they all stop and look at the baby. Yeah. As the baby is like, wait, don't, don't go. This, yep. this person's important, right? Yep. And the wind kind of returns at this the point. The wind does return. Mm -hmm. So I put, Nausicaa is killed, but through the power of nature, she lives again. Notice there is wind again. Their god has returned, mm -hmm. right? Um, their legend has come to pass. Their savior has come. The wind returns. The wings of the angel, Nausicaa, that she may ascend back into the heavens, right? So it lifts her up, right? It lifts her up. She's wearing the blue. The, the tendrils look like the field of wheat, right? Yes. That golden field yes. that the woman had seen or mm -hmm. that the legend spoke of. And she's there with a blue dress. And then the, her, her glider comes back to her because yep. she had let go of it in her mm -hmm. moment of sacrifice. 
but then the wind, the winds brought it back, it to, back her. to her. And so she is then able to ascend as an angel up mm-hmm. into heaven after resurrection. Anyways, freaking beautiful. It's awesome. Freaking <laughs> it's beautiful. Awesome. Like, it's oh, so man. good. I, I, I can't believe it. It is so, so good. And uh, it, 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 it can feel a little bit in the end like the movie kind of ends very suddenly. Yeah, that was an interesting choice to have the yeah. resolution take place during the credits. Yeah. That was interesting. Yeah, it's like the re- the whole resolution part of the yeah. story arc yeah, happens the arc during a credit sequence. Is over the credits. I, I didn't where mind it. the Tomikians leave and, yes. uh, you know, uh, what's his name? The boy. Um, oh, As... Um, Asbel. Asbel. Becomes like Yupa's new like assistant guy yes. that go yeah, into yeah. their excursions into the, you know, the jungles and... Oh, everything kind of resolves in this little credit sequence. They're, right? they're learning to kind of live together. Kind of reminds me of the end of Wally, how they're showing how the humans go back to Earth and they're yeah. just shows them learning to grow plants again and yeah, all that. Yeah, right. It's really, really good. I loved it. Yeah, um, yeah having it occur then. Kind of like a little montage. was sequence. great, but it's the renewal of Earth. Yes. And the peace between humans and the world. Yeah. The world is saved through the sacrifice of one. It's fantastic. Yeah, and she she rescued the beauty from the depths of the abyss. I just have to put that one more time because she found the beauty in the belly of the beast. Yeah. Uh, but she she really is able to revive it and rescue it within herself as she comes to uh, bring the message, you know, to bring the good news <laughs> yeah, right. to everybody else that we we can live, you know, yeah. that the world the world can be renewed, you know. So one last so, thing I wanted to say. Oh, and the last shot is of the mask on the ground. With oh, yes. A little sprout, with the sprout growing, up. growing up. Yep, super good. Love it. Love it. The last thing I kind of wanted to say about all this, uh, in my closing thoughts, was yeah. I, I watched this movie with uh, with Christine. She hadn't seen it before. Oh yeah. And um, so I'm. This these are not like my thoughts specifically. They're hers, but I okay. thought that they were interesting to bring up. In, re- in regards to the character Nasako in the first place, right? One thing that I find really, really great and that she finds particularly really great about this character is how much she embodies the feminine, yet she's a strong oh, female character, it, right? Because she's not uh, afraid. Right. At least in part. It's, it's strength. Yeah. I feel like um, there's a trend kind of in Hollywood right now as you just gotta kill people, all, kill everybody people are trying to, and I think that this is all born out of like, probably like uh, good intentions. Mm-hmm. We're trying to find some um, balance and some uh, equality, I guess, in representation of women and hero roles and things like that in movies, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it just seems like the, the way that some people think you have to do that is to make these women as good or better yeah. fighters and violent and badass than yeah, the male, yeah, yeah. the typical male hero character. Right. Right? We yeah. gotta like make them the same. Yes, or more. Now, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. that it's a bad thing. And, and by no right. means, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to have a female character who's a strong fighter and, and yeah. can do the things that men can do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Right. What I'm saying is that the, the, the trend is that's how we're going to make our women characters equally yes. strong to the men characters. They're just going to be equally good fighters to them. They'll just be, um, well, you'll, you'll have your women heroes, but they'll still be masculine. Yes. So they'll you, embody. You still have your masculine hero. It's right. just a woman being the masculine hero, but it's still the masculine hero. Yes. Yes, exactly. They're yeah. just making it a woman instead. Now. Yeah. I want to clarify this. I want to clarify this for people who haven't seen our Xenogears podcast where we talked about the anima and animus. Oh, yeah. yeah. When we talk about the masculine and the feminine, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not talking about like gender necessarily, right? Right. We're talking about the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine masculine, traits. Masculine, feminine. And that yeah. people, on, in terms of gender, fall on a spectrum where they identify as more than one or the other. We're not talking about the fact that women have to be feminine and men have to be masculine. We're no. talking about the fact that in order to make female characters in movie equal to men, they're just making them masculine women. Yes. And that's not so the only way to do that. We don't have the feminine heroes. Where yes. are the feminine heroes? Yes. And by the way, yeah, it could be a man that is a, embodies the feminine hero. I, but like, where are they? Now Miyazaki's work yes. is where a lot of that's to be Yes. Found. He om- almost never makes a movie about a, about a boy. Yes. The point is that, yes, the masculine hero is the hero in all these stories and they're just making the women masculine women to try to make them but you yeah. don't have to do that right this character mm-hmm. is just as strong a character yeah. as any masculine 
yes. hero out there battling and fighting evil in yes, superhero yes. movies, stronger even in a way right. than they are. Well, in a deeper, because way. a deeper way for sure. The way that you make a character strong is dispelling their fear, not mm. by making them violent. Right. <laughs> not by making them big and strong and able to fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. And allowing her to make that mistake of losing her cool, yes. of stabbing her own friend, right. of of like really acting out in a fit of rage, having showing that and having her learn from it, as opposed to having her just be perfect. Now she is she's pretty perfect yes. throughout the movie, but they definitely are, they show the counter hypothesis to the thesis that the movie's making, right? Yes. Which is oh, you know, she could also act this way, yes. but she doesn't, yes. right? And, and that's, that's good. That also helps build the character to be a, yes. a stronger feeling character. Yes. If you want to see how to make a strong feminine, again, I'm not saying female by saying feminine. Right, feminine. A strong feminine character, a character that embodies the traits of the yin, mm. this is it. This is one of the strongest examples I can think of. Yeah. And we it's don't good. have to good. just make female characters be masculine in order to make them heroic. They can be heroic being feminine too. And so I would like to see more of that is the point yeah. I'm trying to make. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I, I wish we could because I, I think this is one of my favorite characters just in general in anything. And th this theme really resonates with me. I, I think it's something I've thought about a lot just sort of in my life the last few years about yeah. fear being the driver of so many problems. Yeah. So many problems I've had in my life were driven because I had a fear or an insecurity or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, it's through dispelling that that you fix problems, not by fighting and conquering and, like that just escalates problems, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, again, I grew up in a lot of male dominated sort of culturally, uh, in sports and things like that. And yeah, this idea that like, you know, you overcome your problems by never giving up. And uh, there's a very like, Yang-ish sort of approach yeah. or, or philosophy to how you yeah, deal yeah. with things that suppresses the anima and it yes. was through anima development, through yes. balance of those two things and through embracing more of the yin. That Which is rescuing the beauty of your own psyche, yes. of your own mind, you know, right. bringing that out, letting it, letting it be yes. and, and bringing it up. Yeah. It's through embracing these, these nurturing traits through embracing this um what 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 was what was that one uh the the paradoxes the the mm -hmm. the faith the the not being quite so like obsessed yeah. with logic and you oh, know yeah like that i've begun slowly particularly in the, the last year or two to sort of like really address some of my most difficult like psychological problems hmm. and uh, the problem was not anything other than I needed to dispel fear right. and, and develop my anima a little yeah, more. Yeah. A little more. <laughs> right. well, it's a lifelong thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyways, that's kind of really the end of my point on that. But um, I love this character, Nasca. Yeah. I think she's great. And it's, it's very a, a very strong yeah. reason why this is my favorite movie of all of the Ghibli films. Yeah. Before this, it was probably Princess Mononoke. Mononoke, it like would that. be Spirited Away. Spirited Away is yeah. phenomenal. But this movie's so good. But th I don't know. There's something about this that for me it's is special. really special. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. Uh, so, Absolutely. big fan of it. I, I just wanted to point out this in general, the colors, man. Oh, yes. <laughs> the blue and the red and the way that they use it and the way that she has both. Like even when she's wearing the blue dress, she has a, a red jewel, her hair is red, Oh, like right. there's still aspects to right. her of her that are red, right? She didn't get rid of of the red. She she learned to control that part mm -hmm. of her and to, and to subdue it in in a way that can be useful, you know. Yes. And I just love it, but it also shows how she exists between two worlds, you know. Yeah. I think her earrings are red too. Yeah, right. Um, but she's you know she's a bridge and she's just so good. Um, I also wanted to bring up that Nausicaa. <laughs> In Japanese is my last note. The Japanese word is Nausicaa. It's, it's reference to a Greek story from the Odyssey uh, mm -hmm. where there's a character named Nausicaa who, who behaves very similarly to her. She's a very curious, uh, very good-hearted person who helps Odysseus along his travels, right? Yeah. But um, the word nao, naosuru, or naoshimasu, naoshimasu, instead of naoshika, naoshika, it's naoshimasu. It means to heal or to fix. Uh -huh to bring healing, right? Now, 
people who speak Japanese are going to nitpick me and say it's, it's not Nao, it's Naushika. Not Naoshika, it's Naushika. Naushika. Well, it's close enough. <laughs> and Naoshimasu is close enough to Naoshika that I am going to say that um, it may have been uh, intentional. That her character means the name Naosuru, Nao means to heal or to fix. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was her role throughout the film. That's awesome. <sighs> All right, guys. So, we're done. That's the end of this analysis. But we really appreciate all of you. Thank you, as always, for your support. And we will see you again very soon with another Final Fantasy X episode. Peace out. <laughs>